Welcome everybody to the next edition to the Alita Wrestling Podcast, and we have a special guest joining us today with me and no with Noah and Jake and me involved. Uh, we got Courtney Summers. Mm, hi guys. Hi Courtney. How are we doing this Saturday afternoon? Good, good. I'm good. Wrestling. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes, and. And there's been a lot going on ever since WrestleMania. But first, before we delve into that stuff, let's talk about it. How was our WrestleMania weekend? Mine was most... I only went to New York and New Jersey for two things. I went for G1 Supercard in Madison Square Garden, and I went for the Bullet Club Block Party. Like, that's that was my Mania weekend. Because... You know, like, I looked online for, you know, Mania seats and the fact that it was outside and they have those big posts up and, like, all the seats that were affordable, like, you were just looking at a post. So I was like, nah, after the party, I can just go to my hotel room, I have my laptop, I can watch Mania on the network, and I'll be happy. And so that's kind of what I did, and I had a blast, and it was a really fun weekend, dream come true type shit, you know? (laughs) Yeah, the only WrestleMania event I've ever been to was WrestleMania 29, and that, oh God. that, that was a bad one. Was at, bad at least one. I saw The Undertaker and CM Punk go at it. Luckily for me, since I went to 35, 35 was way better, thankfully. I will say this, WrestleMania 35 was definitely one of the better WrestleManias in recent memory, but way too damn long. It was extra special for me this year because I wasn't watching it by myself. My uh, friends that came in from our state... He and I watched it uh, together and had our own predictions game, and I won. I actually enjoyed this WrestleMania. It's been one of the better WrestleManias I've seen in a number of They years. gave us three but feel-good winners. I did not see that coming. Three feel-good moments. I Maybe thought Seth was going to lose. Like I was like, oh, God, he's definitely about to lose to, yeah, to Lesnar. Yeah, Brock Lesnar and like, opening the show. What? But yeah, G1 Supercard and NXT TakeOver New York, that stole the weekend for me. Yeah, however, there is always that black eye moment we had to get, such as the Hall of Fame induction. That took away everyone's attention from the G1 Supercard. Yeah, I was really, I was like, oh my god, someone actually did it. Like, I was, I I wanted to be tweeting and talking about the show, everyone was talking about what happened at the Hall of Fame. Yeah. I was, I was sitting, okay, so get this. I'm sitting here, um, I had, um fifth row ringside like the side like opposite the entrance ramp yeah yeah and so i and i'm five foot even and so everybody's standing up and like i can't see anything that's going on with those two idiots and i'm like and and so i literally have to get up on my chair just to see and all i can see is Enzo's blonde hair like flapping around and shit and I'm like what the hell is going on this was after like word had spread throughout the crowd like my friend April who is a fellow honor club girl she was sitting like a couple of rows ahead of me and she was like oh my god somebody invaded the hall of fame y'all like oh my god and like it just started spreading and then we see this happen and we're like "Are, are you fucking kidding us right now like wrestling has gone insane tonight and and I was pissed off because, you know, someone who's been a Bullet Club fan since the very beginning, since before there was even a Bullet Club, which is Fale and Devitt, um, you know, G.O.D. really did get robbed of their moment because of that. And I was, they did. I was mad. Two fucking idiots. Yeah, I was. Three I was. You count the Hall of Fame. Yeah, like. Like, people, like, we were legitimately thinking, like, we're sitting here thinking, did they really just invade after what just happened at the Hall of Fame? Like, like what's going on here? Like, we were all scratching our heads. And then it took our heads out of the next match because we're all just sitting here like, what the fuck did we just see? Like, right, and that, was, and that was Mayu Iwatami versus Kelly Klein. I ended up re-watching that match because as a member of Honor Club, I respect the women of Honor. Going off topic, I think women of Honor have done better than WWE has in years. Yeah, like I've said it before. I said impact. I said in America right now, as far as women's divisions go, impact and ring of honor are kicking WWE's ass right now. Hell yeah. Yes. Like I have never seen it like this good competitively in ring of honor. 
especially because they haven't really focused on the women that much, and now they are. Speaking of competition now, let's talk about the big TV deal. It's going to be announced on Wednesday, I believe. For all elite wrestling. Yes. Uh, TNT, TBS, I believe that's going to be the announcement. At Madison Square Garden, they're announcing it. Yeah, and the and the con. Bro- I hope they announce a future show for Matt. Yeah, if, if they do, I will be there. I'll be one of the first people to buy tickets for sure. Um. Yeah. I, I I've heard this rumor for months. Like I've been, like, I get people like sending me different things like all the time. Like people send me like news tips and stuff because they know I do podcasts and and everything. And they're like. Have you heard this? And so I've been hearing this for months about, you know, Turner Broadcasting and AEW. And so I'm not really surprised at it. But, you know, it is it is a huge I'm happy get. about it. It's big news. It's big news like, for AEW. It really is. Yeah. And, and, you know, we're kind of already seeing right now how Vince is responding with the way that he's, you know, basically panic booking everything like he is straight up panic booking right now oh like, the wild card rule with that wild card rule that's like like i even said this i said that the brand split like the limit in mean girls it just does not exist and and a lot of people were saying the same thing so now they're like what can how can we bullshit this to cover our tracks and what is, the, what is their way to cover their tracks? The wild card rule. And oh, then it starts off as... It starts off as three, and then we have like four or five guys from SmackDown on, on one night, and I'm like, you've already broke your own wild card rule, Vince. What the <laughs> hell? Yeah, in fact, in fact, when, when Vince McMahon was trying to re-explain the wild card rule to AJ, you saw that look on AJ Styles' face and was like, what the hell did I just sign up for? What is this fucking old man talking about? What in the world are you thinking? Wild card rule? What happened to, you know, you need brands and resetting everything? What is this shit? Yeah, and then it came out that the network was, the two networks, USA and Fox, were saying, you got to end the brand split. This isn't going to work. Oh, jeez. And, and Vince was like, no, 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 no. And, and Vince was like, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, the wild card rule, we could do that. And they were like, and I'm pretty sure the networks were like, that's not going to work. And yeah, Vince is like, well, uh, we already signed the deal, so I'm good on that, so I don't care. And then Fox was like, okay, then give us 3 million views per week on SmackDown, and we will not cancel. Well, that's not well, happening. That's not happening after the first few weeks, I can guarantee you. They're close to not getting two million on SmackDown. I'm not talking about the arena sales. I mean, the Fox advertising will help, obviously, but still. Yeah. And, and part of the reason why, and and this is like ad revenue and site type business type stuff, but yeah. part of the reason we've noticed more commercials during both Raw and SmackDown is because the ratings are going down, and because you know, like they have to they these companies get these ads in and they depend on those impressions that they get through the number of viewers so what happens is is now they're having to show more ads because less people are watching and it's it's not helping them at all and if they're expecting three million on fox i mean that could theoretically happen because fox is technically free tv right so so you know like you don't have to have a cable subscription to get it so it could feasibly happen just for that reason alone. But if Fox is wanting, you know, like those huge, like, you know, like Monday night football numbers or Sunday night football numbers, like they, they're used to getting, yeah. you know, they're, they're just not going to get it. And it's like, you know, like I'm starting to wonder if Fox is seeing all of this right now. And if Fox is kind of having a little bit of buyer's remorse, like maybe we shouldn't have done this. Yeah, maybe I should buy out the contract that I actually gave them and be like, oh, you know what, I'll take this as a loss. But it can't be nearly as bad as it would be if I let this go long term. Yeah, and and then you got to contend with with this issue. Like, you have this guy who's in charge, who's tearing up the scripts every single week, saying, 
do it again, but before the show even starts, and sometimes heading into the show, the script's not finished, and then you got the attendance throwing, and then, and then this is what I start saying on Twitter. I start saying, like, it's at this point that if Triple H took charge, it would take you a long time to fix all the damage that Vince has committed in the last several years, because now, when people look at WWE and they see that name on the programming, they're gonna say, oh, um... Should I really watch this? Like, I've been hearing bad stuff about it, and Vince is kind of a moron. Should I still watch it? Like, I said this. Even if, say, Fox wanted to get NXT on television, WWE's name is on there, and then people will see that and say, Oh, it's like EA games when you want to buy this super cool game that's coming out, but then you see EA's logo on it, and it's like, Oh, I I, I don't know. I should do that. That's a bad idea. That's an omen. What happened with EA? Uh, you know how EA treats all the developers like slaves and Anthem happened when Bioware kind of collapsed with all that? Oh, and, yeah, I think so. And then, and then you also got Activision, how they handled Destiny by basically bankrupting Bungie's crea- creativity. Also, yeah. speaking of Vince, you know what he also does? What? He tacks on months to wrestlers' contracts who clearly don't want to be there anymore, such as Luke Harper. And Dash oh, Wilder. Yeah, talk about that. So Luke Harper... That's terrible. That, that's embarrassing. I feel so bad for Luke Harper. The story of how it went is just... It, it was such a hard thing for me to read. The thing, this is a grudge he's been holding to Con. Eric Con threw a solid on accent like four years ago, so he never let him reach the top. And now the fact that he wants to reach the top, you're not even given this opportunity. And he had an idea. He, he had an idea. Go. He like he even tested EC3 and Drake Maverick as a, as a manager pairing, which would have been great. But after one match, he was like, nope, this isn't going to no, work. Scrap it. So EC3 and Luke Harper fade into oblivion, but Luke Harper, he doesn't get to leave. He just gets to sit and wallow at home. Yeah, like, this this is, like, petty and shady as hell. Like, you, like, just because they were injured, just because they got hurt competing for you, by the way, for your company, for your fans, that injury took place because they work for you, okay? And you're going to tack that on to their contract because they want to leave because you don't respect them as a creative artist and you won't let them have creative satisfaction? Like, come the fuck on, Vince. Like, if, if this is the way that he's responding to competition, then WWE as a whole is in trouble. Like, this is a, this is what nobody is saying. If this is how he's responding when there is no television that he has to worry about. Wait until we're in the fall this year and there is AEW weekly television. You think the chaos and pandemonium and the bullshit and evil shenanigans are bad now? Like, just wait. It's about to get a hell of a lot worse. Yep. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, look, let, let's just go down the list of people who have been F that want to leave. Okay, so we already talked about Harper. Courtney, I'll start with you. What's another name you could add to that list? Um, the Revival and how they are being publicly humiliated. Oh, basically. yes. In fact, here's the yeah, thing. Like, yeah, here's the thing about that. About that. Um, <laughs> like, uh, that, that has me mad. Like, I'm like, free them. Like, let them fucking go already, old man. Free the Revival! Also, there was something that was very shady and and very disturbing about WWE's internet post they made about the revival. Oh no! You see, this is what they said at the end of this text about the about their coming week this week. They said this: "It looks like there's going to be more public humiliation for the revival. It's either this or whatever. The choice is up to them." And I was like, "That's not entertainment. That's a threatening ultimatum." Yeah, yeah it is. And even the revival tweeted and saying, "Yeah, we we understand what you're saying." You will give in to me or else. And, and this is apparently part of this big plan by Vince to say if he can't have the revival, then he'll devalue them to the point that they're absolutely worthless for other companies. But he seems to have forgotten how the real world works. Dash Wilder and Scott Dawson could just go on a live microphone, bash the company in such a way that it will make people say. Get those guys. They know what they're talking about. We're about to AEW confirmed. <laughs> and then, and then Dash Wilder 
Vince McMahon decided to be further bet petty about this and decides to extend his contract by an additional two months because he had an injury a few months back. How? What logic makes sense where you extend someone's contract for being injured when they got injured underneath your freaking persona doing work for you? You're literally profiting off the broken body of your freaking employee with no remorse. This is why, this is why I encourage, like, I know probably no wrestlers are listening to this, but possibly if you are, I encourage you to, when you sign a contract with anyone, this is where it's important. You have a lawyer, it may be a little bit expensive, but it's going to save your ass in the long run in a situation like this. Make sure that you are protected in that regard where they can't go in and say, oh, you didn't work for us for this amount of time. So technically, through a legal loophole, we can legally do this to you. You know, this is why, you know, contract lawyers need to be brought in on every freaking negotiation on a talent's behalf. We need that because then we won't have situations like this where we can have a tyrant like Vincent Kennedy McMahon decide you know, he's going to put some extra prison time on you because he just feels like it. I know you know, that. like, this is why I don't get why people have a problem with AEW. It's an alternative to this shit, and people, like, are still complaining. Oh. Well, that's the, the thing about that, Jake. You got the WWE hardcores or just the WWE extremists that are like, oh, look at this. Yeah, they're crazy? already shitting on it when they haven't even started yet. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Already ju- yeah, it hasn't even started, okay? Let's look at Double or Nothing and go from there. And I understand they're offering what people may call extreme promises, you know, insurance. No yeah. Oh, yeah, the John Oliver incident. We all know what happened with that. Oh, God, here we go. <laughs> the only, speaking of Debbie, the only thing I'm actually enjoying about them right now is the Bray Wyatt segments, and those are segments not being written by Vince at all. Just keep that in mind. Yeah, so it's, being, it's being controlled yeah. by Triple H, Bray Wyatt, and The Undertaker. They're all working together on this, and they have Hollywood executives coming in and saying, okay, this is the set designs, this is the cinematography, we're not going to help involve the writing process, we'll leave that to the wrestlers who actually know what they're doing. Yeah. Yeah, Bray Wyatt knows what he's doing with this character. He knows where it's going to go, and that's why it's so good. And that's why yeah. Bray Wyatt's trying to bring Luke Harper on here, too. They should make Nikki Cross a part of it. She's not doing anything. Oh, yeah, it. speaking of Nikki Cross, I just got this yeah. word about her. Yeah, I'm getting worried, too. Yeah, I just got this word about her. There's what, a... What? What happened? Nikki Cross made an ominous video where she says, I think it's time I stepped out of the darkness, a.k.a. Yeah. gimmick change! Yeah, yeah you, you know all those pictures that she's been... Yeah, like, this is what she, I, could, she could be like a part of the Firefly Funhouse as like a lighter gimmick, and then she can go back to the dark side or something like that. Well, in well, ICW, she was known as like Queen of the Galaxy, like, you know, a high-profile type model type persona with a very bright character and color to her, but still aggressive nature. And Courtney, I imagine that's where you were going. Like, they, like she's been posting pictures of, like, there's an evil twin... And there, and there are, like, these pictures of her, like, before she was, before her character went batshit, you know? Yeah. Like, like there are, like, pictures of her, like, really pretty looking and everything else. And I fear that they are going to make her go to that. And they're going to, yeah. they're going to try to make her, you know, just like the other girls, you know? The next and, Alina. yeah, like, I have this big fear with her. Like, she is great at what she does. She is great at per- at portraying this batshit crazy character. And the only thing that I would do with it is I would turn down the comedy aspect of it a little bit and make it a little bit more dark, a little bit more sinister, have her, you know, cutting more cryptic promos. With... In nature. Yeah. Like, that's what I really want from her. And, and I fear that they're going in the total, complete opposite direction. And... It's just like it's frustrating because you because like I've seen I've seen her have some insane freaking matches before. Her like with Oscar uh, NXT last woman standing was um, amazing. That's still one of my favorite matches ever to date. From yeah, but Dele D- refuses to acknowledge it though. They they claim Becky versus Charlotte's the first ever retcon. Push the button, Eric. There's our first retcon of the podcast. And also. When Kevin Owens is going out in an interview saying he would have done things differently, that's how you know you're in trouble. And now the own performer who's working for you. 
Yeah, and now he's going to lose his push because he expressed himself. Because you know, man. I was thinking he that. would win the title at Money in the Bank. Well, it looks like that's not going to happen. And, and then, uh, then we get the biggest. Robert Goldberg and freaking Jetta. Yeah. Speaking of that, did you hear what they're going to call the show? Blood Money. No. Be Sands of Time. I have no idea where they got that name from. But... Prince of Persia, the video yeah, game series. Oh, I know that video game. I've heard of it. I mean, the, yeah, that's why. That's why, the, the that's why I, I said, hey, hey, WWE, Ubisoft called. Uh, they said they already took that idea and ran with it. Trademark, sue them. And I, I even tweeted, Sands of Time. More like when you go to Saudi Arabia, you go back in time a little bit. Like, yeah. Like, they're so progressive, Courtney. They're going to the progressive state They bury Jenna. the journalists that they kill in the sand. That's what they do. Oh, God. Yeah, and, and here's... The corrupt government. Yeah, and here's the thing. Um, about the whole Dean Ambrose, John Moxley thing, there was something I kept thinking about regarding how he left the WWE. What? Why do I always get this feeling that there was a meeting behind the scenes? Like, remember how before Roman came back from leukemia? Great job, by the way. Um, uh, um, Gene Ambrose was getting publicly trashed by wrestlers every single week. And then when Roman came back, all of a sudden he was getting these big victories, and even though he was leaving. And then I started thinking, like, oh, dear God. Did, did Vince threaten, threaten Dean Ambrose? Roman came out to bail him out. But Roman says, look, if you do this, if you treat Ambrose with respect, I'll do the Saudi Arabia show. You know what? That wouldn't surprise me one bit, considering how Vince wants Roman in uh, Saudi Arabia. Considering we know other people with morals definitely are willing not to go and probably won't go like John Cena and Daniel Bryan. Actually, here's the thing. Roman was, before leukemia happened, Roman did tell them, I'm not going. And now Dean Ambrose is suddenly getting this respectful exit and a show dedicated to him. And now you're like, huh, did did Roman agree to do the show in Saudi Arabia if Ambrose is re treated with respect? Ah, uh, jeez. Didn't Roman say when he come back he wanted to just be himself more and just be his own type character and not really be like this guy that is, oh, I'm always in the title picture. I'm the top guy or I'm going to win. Yeah, except Vince doesn't care about people having individuality and personality so long as they're Superman. Courtney, go ahead and put in your two cents on this. Um, Roman, since he's came back from leukemia, has been kind of interesting. Um, when he first came back, you know, like there was that huge pop and, you know, all the crowd loves him. And I've noticed that it's kind of leveled off a little bit. And it's right. like, and it's because, you know, they're, I don't think that they're booking him right, necessarily. Like, if you want to, you know, make this all about somebody that has to, you know, overcome adversity, you know, like, make like make him face some adversity and, like, make the crowd want to root for him more. Like, don't just start handing him everything, you know? Like, that. Like that's my thing. Um, and, here's the thing and here's the thing about that. Considering the few he's with, Shane McMahon and Elias, are you telling me they're going to try and use McMahon to put Roman over again? Yep. That looks like what's going to happen. Ah! Uh, so let me guess. And we're going to get Shane McMahon versus Roman Reigns in a freaking Extreme Rules match at Extreme Rules. I think they'll save it till SummerSlam. Oh, please, no. Because Vince sees that probably as like a, a high-profile match. Well, considering how many matches Shane McMahon is supposed to wrestle on his contract, whatever that might be... You're probably right, Jake. And the thing, I'm going to go see SummerSlam Live this year. Oh, you, you better hope they give you a decent card. I'm praying for it, but at least I do get to see NXT TakeOver Toronto. Now, speaking of which, let's try to be positive on this and talk about... TakeOver 25. Here. Yeah. Yes, 25. Can you believe it? They announced, they announced the top two matches yesterday. Adam Cole versus Gargano in a rematch, which Bang. I believe everything that's been going on with the Undisputed Era will culminate there. Yeah, it has to. It and Io Shirai versus Shayna Baszler, which hopefully results in Io taking the title. You want Shayna to be moved up then? No, nah, I just think it's time for a new champ. Shayna's had her reign. I think it's time for Io to take over as the new champ. I honestly would like to see Candice Ray face that Shayna Baszler for the title and Candice being the one. Kind of like rebuilding a whole nother uh, Tommaso Ciampa 
Johnny Gargano type of feud and story and match creativity, even though the two aren't really best friends. I'm sure Candice and Shane are not best friends. But I can see those two create major magic because Candice is hardcore. Yeah, like, that's the most frustrating thing about the way that they have, you know, portrayed Candace. Because I remember PWG Candace getting insane and doing some mental shit, you know, on the indies. And now they've kind of downgraded her to Mrs. Gargano. And, you know, like, I would love for her to have that chance to, you know, go up against Shayna, who is this legit badass from the MMA world, I would love to get to see that Candace come out and dethrone her and have that amazing moment, you know? I'm it's still waiting for it. That could be a main event moment. That could be a main event takeover. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Courtney. And, and one more thing, leave Johnny Gargano, if it happens, leave Johnny Gargano in the back. Let her have this moment by herself. Yeah. Let let her let her not have her career, you know, have an umbilical cord to her husband's. You know, <laughs> like like it, it's legitimately that's what they have done to her. Sadly, I don't see that happening to be honest, because that's how they portray her this whole time. Even but this now. Is age we're talking about, so maybe just maybe they might do something right here. I will say this: uh, Triple H and his creative. Speaking of NXT. Yeah. I'm really upset that Dijak's hurt. He was he was doing he was doing a great things like uh, he's been on a great run these past few months. It's sad that he got hurt. He would have fought Velveteen yeah, at Takeover, sure. which would have been a great match, even if he didn't win the match necessarily. But yeah, hey, I, 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 I was a little surprised he was still getting good. pushed. I was a little surprised he was still getting pushed after some tweet he wrote that involves kind of a very genocidal message. Was, speaking of those messages. Did you all? Did you see the Lars Sullivan messages that he's oh, been writing no. on the internet? Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't want to delve what right. What said about Ronda Rousey? Yeah, yeah, but like, here's the thing. I didn't want to delve into that. But the only thing I did hear is that uh, a sponsor in WWE heard about these comments and is saying, "We are going to talk to WWE about this. We're going to demand action." And he said something racist about Big E. I think. Yeah. Let's not bring that term up. Oh, and yeah. that's going to be awkward. He's on SmackDown with the New Day now. It's about to be really awkward. No, Jake, remember Wildcard Rules. He could be on both brands. Oh, my God. And it's okay, Jake. <laughs> it's okay, Jake. Lars Sullivan apologized to Vince, and Vince was okay with it, even though that should not really happen. Oh, Vince is okay with it. He's a, fuck, he's a sociopath. Thank you. Vince doesn't care. Vince no, is no. a... Vince is a psycho sociopath. Like he's got like the psycho, the psychotic, the and man has issues. Path. That's the thing. He definitely has issues. Up, if you look up every demental range type word in a thesaurus or dictionary, this man should be the freaking picture next to it. This is one of the most crude, evil, misplaced human beings on the planet. I mean, the dude. The dude wanted to book an angle with his own daughter. Yeah, and the incest the story. The father lock. of her child. And he wanted to book James Elder as a transgender to fight Charlotte at WrestleMania. God help us. Which I know Eric wanted to ask him that question when he saw him at Walmart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, 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 yeah, I would do it. I would so do it. Yo, Ellsworth. So... What was your reaction when Vince came to you and said, "Hey, I want to book you as a transgender, and I wanna and I wanna have you go against Charlotte"? I would have so asked him, because oh I just, my God. I we just, we would have got that instead of Charlotte versus Oscar. Oh my God! Oh, like, Lord. like I just thank God that Triple H actually has a set of nuts, and you know that he's the one that's, you know, when Vince comes up with crazy shit like that, he's the one that goes, uh, "I don't know about that, pops." Yeah, I disagree with this. And yeah. Then ignore, and then Vince ignores him, and then it blows up in his face, and then Triple H is just laughing. Yeah. And Triple H is just sitting there with a sledgehammer going, yep, I'm just waiting. And, and then, and then, yeah, and then, then you got those two tweets he liked. Yeah. I can only imagine what he would have done to Kenny Omega's character if he came to WWE. Oh, my God. He would have, oh. made, he would have made it very... Flamboyant. Controversial to say the least. Yeah, I'm about to say controversial is the word I would use. Maybe try to rebuild Team Canada. 
Hey, you got Eric Young. You want to put him in probably like a gay love triangle with someone. Oh, God. Oh, my God. With you know what he probably would have did? With Sonya you know Deville. Probably... No, you know what he probably would have did? What? Because Velveteen Dream's character is very flamboyant. Oh, no. Right? He probably would have put him in an, in an angle with Velveteen Dream. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, this is what would have happened. And they would have been, like, flirting with each other and crap. And, so, really, and Billy like, and so, Chuck 2.0? Yeah. Like, I am telling you, that's what Vince would have did. It would have been like Billy and Chuck. Pretty much. Hey, retcon! There's a button again. God! Yeah, and, and then you got Triple H say, Yeah, I agree, my father-in-law is kind of mad with power. It, like a I, mean, I do wonder though, out. does Shane have any control backstage or is he just signed as a performer? He's mostly signed as a performer. The only time he ever had something creative involved was the New Day Time Machine angle before the Bullet Club attacked them. Really? Yeah, that was the that was only him. thing he did. Huh. Well, at least we did hear SOS again. A speed of which, let's talk about the Dirty Champion, Kobe Kingston. Kobe Kingston has been the flavor of the month, or should I say year, ever since he got his big break or first moment showcase in that gauntlet match, that elimination chamber, and then fast lane. By the way, I went to fast lane live. What an effed up card that was. Yeah. And then he got his moment at WrestleMania. And fast then, lane was an okay show. I mean, it wasn't anything amazing, but it was okay. Look, I will say this. It was my first live preview experience. You cannot argue with your live preview experience, especially your first. I did have a bad... I felt so bad for Mustafa Ali. He was he just got he was getting so booed because he wasn't Kofi, but he luckily turned around at the end and the people were cheering him. But really think about this. If Mustafa Ali had not gotten injured, we probably would be getting Mustafa Ali's mania moment. Exactly. That would have been cool to see, but it wouldn't have been as good as Kofi's. Yeah, though I'm pretty sure the Muslim community would have loved it. They need a represent. That's who they would have done it for. They're trying to expand into a Muslim country. Oh god! Because the last time they did that, it ended badly with Jinder Mahal. Oh god! Oh Jesus! I remember watching SmackDown the night. You want to say, "Oh, is it gonna be Sami Zayn challenging Orton? Is it gonna be Luke Harper?" And then Jinder wins. I'm like, "What the?" I'm sitting. I'm sitting here, and I just put two and two together with you guys saying that because I never put this together. Um, I was wondering, like, why this Ali push was just coming out of nowhere. And then you think they're having the Saudi Arabia show, so maybe the intention was... Yeah, I wouldn't have complained. They would have made a new star. Exactly. They, they, but the intention was, okay, I, I just put it together right here. Like, I'm all excited. I figured this out. <laughs> um, um, so, the inten- so the intention was they were going to put the title on Ali at Mania, have him have it so when they go over to Saudi Arabia, they can say, hey, M- Muslim country, we have a Muslim WWE champion now, you know, and put that over to the moon. Like, that was what the end game was with that to begin with. Martin but And he would have yeah. lost it back to Brian afterwards. Yeah. Um, that's, that's clearly not. I don't think Kofi's losing because Brian's obviously a tag champion now. Yeah, I'm very proud of Kofi. Like, Kofi has been grinding it out for over a decade in WWE. I won't yeah. complain if he loses that money in the bank. He got his moment. He got a few successful title defenses, but... Yeah. And that now... Now he's coming with this no, with this take-no-shit attitude, and I love it. I'm like, finally, we're stopping the comedy. We're stopping the bullshit. Sure, he's still going out there and having fun, but he's not going to take your bullshit. So and basically what Bailey should have been like in the in the main roster like she was they, in NXT. What they tried to do with that whole, we're not going to talk about that this is your life segment, but... Oh, no. Oh, no. They tried to do that by saying, oh, she's going to she's gonna use the kendo stick, and then they didn't do that, and right, she I just got, got I gotta destroyed. Ask this. Do you all think Bailey should be healed? I would, yes. I would enjoy it. If I, here's the thing of, I said. More badass. He should be more of a tweener. Here's the thing I said about when Bailey turned on Sasha, and then they stopped doing that. They did the whole. She just said, "You ain't shit." That was, that was great. Yeah, I was like thinking this. I was thinking this. Bailey probably would have been in the same position Becky Lynch is in right now if they committed to it. Speaking oh, of Sasha. Oh uh, yeah. Any updates about her? 
Um, all she's been doing is making Instagram posts talking about how to stop negativity, basically. But I was, but all the story. She got her hair again, I think. Yeah, I heard that too. She got it black. Black? Yeah. Yeah, besides that, no news, I don't think. Yeah, all I've been hearing is just rumors and reports. She's sitting at her. Yeah, and then you get this disturbing story what Vince could theoretically do if, if it comes to it. You see, a story came out, and it says that Vince McMahon could actually freeze her contract or or extend it so much that he can actually legitimately take away her dream. What? Like, freeze the contract? Like, permanently. Yeah, because technically, when... Because te- here's where the technicalities come in with contract. Yeah. When you sign that contract, with you're agreeing... With an independent contractor. Yeah, right, you're, <laughs> but what, what you're agreeing to is you're agreeing to work legally for this set amount of time. And if you right. decide you're just not going to do it anymore, then you're technically in breach of your contract. And technically, Vince can legally do that. And this is why I said before, have a contract lawyer when you negotiate with Vince because you need to make sure that you're protected in a situation like this. This is a, this and, is a demented old man we're talking about. And here's about. one thing that nobody has thought about. What? Okay? Mikazi, her hubby, works backstage in wardrobe, right? Yeah. Yeah, I think so. That's the rumor. So, so get this. What Vince could do is if he really wanted to be an asshole, is he could fire her husband, cut off the cut off that income and basically say, I'm not going to let your husband come back to work until you do. Like, oh. nobody has said that, that Vince can actually do that to her. Like, that is why I, I have always said, you know, like with couples, especially if they work together, if they're working together, especially in WWE. Yeah. Like, you, you've got to look out for each other. And in this case, like, Sasha, like, understand, like, like you need to try to go to Triple H, maybe, and talk to him and see if there is some way that y'all can smooth this out because this could get a lot uglier than it already is. Right. You're just turning a negative into an even worse negative. I mean, I remember last time they said that at Stelme, right? So, but I think the proposed idea at one point was having Sasha bank with money in the bank. Now, if they were to do that, let her bring back her boss persona. It's probably going to be Mandy Rose now, if we're being honest. Actually, it's been said. Uh, Actually, it's being said about that. Um, They're they're saying that. No, no. What they're saying is this. I was hearing a story about this. They're saying that they might have Sasha Banks take out one of the participants and get involved in the match. And she wins it as a heel. I'd like that. Me too. Which one would you have her take out? Well, actually, it might be either Natalia or Mandy Rose. Take out Mandy, please, Sasha. Take that <laughs> bitch out. I can't. She should I take cannot... out Dana Brooke realistically because she shouldn't even be in the match. Like, well, I'm I mean, sorry. Dana Brooke let her arm get broken by Ronda Rousey, so I guess that was her ticket into the match. I mean, I'm sorry. I know y'all are guys, and y'all probably are all like Corey, and you probably love her. But, no. but Mandy, just for me, like, I feel like she is there Stone because should she should be is... in the match. You know, you know, like she's there because she's pretty and she's blonde. She's not there because because of any amount of time that she's put in. At she's least not... Electa Bliss is good on the microphone and she's a great character. And her in ring work is good too, you know. Yeah. Like like I hate the fact that Sonya has basically Sonya who comes from kind of a legit MMA background herself yeah. has been made to play second fiddle to who? Mandy fucking Rose? Bro. Are you kidding me? I hope Sonya costs her the briefcase to advance their story. I split up, but it looks like they really are legit real friends. Yeah, they, yeah. here's the thing about that. They actually live together. What? Yeah. They're like real-life BFFs. Like, they have, like, their own little YouTube series where they go around eating donuts all over the country and shit. And I'm just thinking this. Hey, how about they have that on television and we get character development? That'd be too much like right, Eric. Yeah, it'd be too much. Yeah. That, would, that would be, like, too good because, you know, like, Vince is just used to putting out shit at this point, let's be honest. Yeah. I must control everything. I'm a genius. God. 
Yeah, I completely agree on the Mandy Rose thing. Courtney, to answer your question, I don't look at Mandy Rose for appeal. There's a reason I watch Women of Honor. There's a reason why Kelly Klein liked my tweet. I look at women in wrestling for freaking wrestling. Amen. Yeah. Amen, brother. Like, I adore Kelly. Like, even, like, last night, like, she like she said the word bitch. I love and that. And they were like, and they were like, um, and they were talking about how she was having another fine. And I even as a joke sent this tweet and like me and Kelly got it, got it instantly. Like I said, I said, I will help you pay that fine, Kelly, because that was warranted. And she's and like, it here. Truth. It was freaking true. This isn't TNA. Don't rebuild the beautiful people. Give me wrestling. Damn it. I like Ann Riccoboni. Yeah. Um. And, and the thing is, is that Bully Ray is kind of in charge of creative a little bit over there at Ring of Honor now. And isn't Velvet and I, right, Sky his wife? And no, she's not his wife, but they have been together for a very, very long time. Okay. And it feels like this is like some favoritism and shit. And I'm like, do not bring that shit in Ring of Honor. Do not bring no. that WWE type with the beautiful favoritism. People. You yeah. know, like the don't bring that in here. Because no, I'm not a fan of the allure. I do not like that faction at all. Thank Me neither. Thank Me you. neither. I'm like, I'm like, number one, who died and made Angelina the boss last night? Number one. Number two. <laughs> yeah. Number two. What the fuck is this shit? Like, like I was sitting, I was sitting there in Madison Square Garden. Like, I was like thrilled to see them because. I was like, okay, maybe we're going to be doing something where they join Team Klein, you know, maybe, you know. And then they go and attack Kelly after she had her moment, and I was furious. I was like, are you fucking serious right now? And These kids just really came out here. Rain. Yeah, and and what's funny is Madison Rain must be freaking pissed because well, Madison, why she left. Madison they, wanted to do this. Yeah, there was and, there. She's like, oh, whatever. <laughs> back in impact with our husband Josh Matthews. Yeah, who last night it was funny as hell. Like I even tweeted like LMFAO at Josh Matthews talking about Madison's hubby being here watching. I'm like, Remaining impartial, you, of course. I'm like, you are her hubby, you dipstick. <laughs> <laughs> well, you can't showcase that on Impact Wrestling. Yeah, like he had to no sell the fact that his wife got put in a fucking coffin with a bunch of zombie bridesmaids. <laughs> Oh, God, too young. That's a character. <laughs> yeah. Um, also, one... Also, uh, the whole Enzo Mori and Big Cass situation, yeah, apparently just right after that whole moment, they left Ring of Honor. Like, they're not building Good. off of that. Yeah, I them in Ring of Honor. Good. Yeah, Good. I, think, I think it was because of all the backlash and because New Japan apparently did not know... Yeah, no, yeah. Only the upper management of Ring of Honor knew that this was planned. No one else was and told. That's why GOD was so pissed. I honestly don't blame them for disrespecting the Ring of Honor. Brothers I think those promos, the Briscoes and the GOD cut on the Enzo and Cass were legit. Yeah. That's yeah, me I, too. Oh, I cannot wait for that title match. Them boys versus GOD. That match tonight. For the Ring of Honor World Tag Team Championship. That is going to be crazy. I think the Briscoes are getting those titles back. Me too. That's my prediction. Yeah, I, yeah, because I mean, God cannot keep those titles, you know, and I work for New Japan as Becky. well. I don't see Becky keeping those titles for too long. Both of them. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. Becky two belts. How long do you see Becky two belts being lasting? Do you see her dropping one of those titles at Money in the Bank? Yes, well, she's Either dropping one at Money in the Bank. Or the Money in the Bank winner. Huh. I would, I would say if 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 it's gonna be a heel that wins the um. Money in the bank, then I would say maybe a heel would take it off of her. But I don't, I don't want it to be Lacey, if I'm being honest, because Thank Lacey, you. because Lacey has not really like Lacey on NXT was great, yeah, was phenomenal. But now they've taken her and they whittled her down to just Bottom walk man. down, come down the aisle, go back up, and do nothing, and she really has shown us nothing of her wrestling ability. So, yeah. You know, like, why? Yeah, you know, like, why put the belt on someone that's not even showcased their talent yet? 
Yeah, I, and, and I was just thinking, like, imagine if they allowed her to showcase her Marine-talented combat training. Yes, because she's a former Marine. That's why I actually respect her a little bit, but what they're doing with her doesn't make no damn sense. And by the way, I cannot take the women's right as a legit finisher winning her a title. I can't Either can I. Maybe, but not that right fit. Remember when Alexa Bliss won the title and all she did was a knockout punch on Bailey? Yes, I do. I remember that. And we saw what happened to Bailey ever since. Yeah, wow. and, and like, okay, so do you think Bailey wants to leave WWE lately ever since the Sasha Banks incident happened? I get the feeling that Bailey has been frustrated for quite some time. But she, she loves wrestling. She, she, she is, right. she is, she's like me. She, she is just obsessed with wrestling. She eats lives sleeps and breathes it and she is so willing to do pretty much anything that you ask of her and you know for her to be treated the way that she has like i have been seeing like just body language wise like because i can really read like right from a person's body language like you know like how they're feeling you know internally and i've been noticing body language wise for the past year and a half even that she has just been growing increasingly and increasingly more frustrated with her creative direction. And she's even started taking college classes on the side. So, oh, so I mean, like she is definitely preparing herself for the day where she has to just say, I tried this and it didn't work. So I'll go and do this instead. You know, which I hope that that never happens because someone as passionate and is in love with this business as she is, mm -hmm. you know, you know, like they deserve they better. They managed to kill her passion for wrestling. Yeah, all I gotta say is barely deserves better, but I can sense how frustrated she must be as well. I don't believe that her and Sasha threw a tantrum in the hotel room though when they dropped the tag team titles to the Iconics. Yeah, they're friends with the Iconics. Yeah, exactly. They probably are glad the Iconics finally got their moment. I certainly was. And think about this. Women tag team titles. What makes you a tag team? You come out together. You have tag team chemistry. You got the same music. You've been doing this for years. The Icons have been a tag team since freaking NXT. Yeah, but my I think the one main problem with all this was the fact that it happened too soon for people. Like even Bailey and Sasha were saying that it was too soon. Like they uh, they were promised. I understand why WrestleMania is a big stage, and the moment obviously meant a lot to them because they they love wrestling as well. They've been doing this for so long together. Again, that match. Here's the thing about WrestleMania: you either have matches or you have moments that are set up as matches. That was not a match. That was a moment. Yeah. And, like, I'm so proud of those girls. Like, I they know. have been busting... The Iconics have been busting their ass. Some people since. don't like them, though. I don't get the hate, to be honest. No, like, they have, don't like the accent, for example. They people just annoying. think they're annoying. Like, they're Courtney, supposed to be annoying and they're doing their job. I feel like they can do a tag team title run similar to the type of chemistry and shenanigans like Lay Cool did. Yeah, like Lake Hill did. And I almost want to say this with them. Like, the Iconics, to me, are kind of like the female Edge and Christian, in a way, because of the way that there's, that there's like, there's like that comedy aspect to it, and it's funny, and, and you know, like, you can't really be mad at it. You can't really be mad at their shenanigans, because it's just so freaking hilarious. Like, who was it? Was it Billy Kay with the, you gotta be joking me. Like, yeah, that thing has really been... Kay. That's one of her standard lines. Like, I love that. And it just, it reminds me so much of Edge and Christian and the type of chemistry that they have because they have been friends like Edge and Christian were yeah. since high school. This and I believe they've been friends or something yeah. like that all the way yeah. since high school. I love the Iconics personally. Me too. And I don't get the hate that they get. I, I just honestly, I don't get it. I'm like, I get and it. And the thing is, it's supposed to be annoying. Yeah, it's just part of their character. People say they can't wrestle. Okay, oh, look. get get the hell out of here with that. They can That's they can not do both their work. Fault. They are under Vince. Vince does not cater to women's wrestling or tag Yeah, Vince wrestling. doesn't let them go he all out. Let them wrestle to their full potential. Yeah, the only reason why Evolution was so good is because Triple H was probably in charge of it. Vince if we're being gone. honest. Yeah, actually, I found that Vince was the one who wrote the show. What? what? Yeah, what? I looked it up. Vince McMahon was the producer of the show. Triple H had nothing to do with it. 
But probably the May Young and the NXT title match, but that's it. All right, well, give Vince credit. He wrote a good show. Wow, one good show in the last one good ten and a half show. years. Good for you. Yeah, like, I, I'm like that, too. Like, I'm not about what have you done for me lately. I'm about have you been consistent over the past six years. have been consistent. And Vince has been enough. Inconsistent. He's been. Morning. Inconsistency with an No, they've been roster. consistent at being absolutely terrible. Okay, yeah, that's yeah. Yep. Yep. I'm to the point I almost want to watch nothing but Wednesdays anymore, live and in full, and just go to YouTube clips for Raw and SmackDown Live and watch, oh, I don't know, Stardom, Rise, Ring of Honor, New Japan, Impact. Oh, yeah, speaking of the highlight clips on YouTube, here's the thing I found out. They're Vince goes down because they they want they they're forcing people to watch the show. Oh yeah, Vince is trying to lower the clip postings. He wants them after the show and not during the show because he knows they won't. Because they know, well, I don't have to watch this. I'll just wait for the clips to come online. Oh. So wow. Vince is aware of the internet. He just chooses to do the stupid route. Oh okay, yeah, stupid route. Typical Vince. Idea. Yeah. Well, after this week, like you were saying, like you're ready to just watch. NXT and NXT UK, um, and 205 Live. Well, me, like, I try to watch 205 Live, but I've got so much other stuff to watch that, you know, like, it kind of falls to the, it falls to the wayside a little bit. I understand that, and that's part of the problem with wrestling in general. There's so much good stuff out there, it's kind of hard to keep up with everything that you really want to. Now, me, on the other hand, I'm lucky enough this summer that I don't work Wednesday evenings, so I'm able to watch the three-hour block of power that's called In Full. And NXT, one of the NXT UK? Yeah, and even, yeah, and the thing is, I started a podcast on 205 Live called 205 Live Max because I feel like it's the most under-treated, under-appreciated brand in WWE. Yeah, it is, and they have tremendous talent on that show, and it's just it's just a shame that they won't do the thing that is going to help that show out the most. Keeping it after SmackDown, people have watched two hours is a bad move. What they need, what they need to do is that I've said this for the past I don't know how many months. They need oh, to no. move, they need to move two hundred five live to full sale. Like they only are at full sale for like those few days where they do the NXT tapings, right? So what you do is when like maybe a couple of weeks later, you know, do a set of two hundred five live tapings in front of the full sale audience, where the full sale audience is going to be engaged or going to be alive. It's yeah. going to be electric, and it's not going to be people who are sleepy because they've watched SmackDown yeah. already, and they're tired, you know? Yeah. And not only that, you give, you can then move it to a different night, maybe, something mm-hmm. to where it looks like people are interested. Because when you watch a show and a crowd is just dead, you know, and, and this makes me sound like a hypocrite because I'm a big New Japan fan, and those people are super quiet, but... Still, you've got That's the, the audience starts then. They, they're respectful of performers. Yeah. Yeah, but that's a cultural thing. But, you know, like, it takes you out of it. Like, when, you, like when you're like you seeing, like, people, like, getting up and leaving in the crowd, and you're seeing, like, the crowd size, like, it just shrinks massively. Yeah. You know, you know, like, it, it really does. It takes you out of it. And, and I think the solution to that is, is they need to try and maybe do, like, a special 2-0 live show as a test. Um, down at full sale. We should on a separate night when, like, Thursday. I mean, Thursday has nothing on right now, so Thursday is like my free wrestling day, so I literally can use that for anything. I'd but watch I mean, it a I, lot more if it was on Thursday on its own. Oh, I completely agree, because there'd be no competition. And Courtney, yeah, I even proposed this one time on one of my podcast episodes. If they can somehow put the Cruiserweight title on a takeover, or do a Cruiserweight special, call it Elevated, bring in some great Cruiserweight to the class at the spotlight, and then you do a like, great Cruiserweight match, maybe even introduce a tag team division, or like some sort of special, I don't know, other title, I feel like that would greatly help 205 Live. I truly do believe 205 Live matters, hence my podcast name. And I love it every week. 
Yeah, yeah, and all this happened because Enzo Amore got fired and Vince realized he made a mistake and gave it to Triple H. And once again, this is Triple H creative direction versus Vince creative direction. Who's right, who's winning, and who's bringing the better product? Triple H is winning that battle by a freaking mile. Because, right. because after this week and after the clusterfuck that was Raw and then... It, it SmackDown was better. Don't get me wrong, right. but it was still a clusterfuck. Right. And I was, I'm just like, I'm like, me and Vince are like Ross and Rachel and friends at this point. We're on a break. Like I've got to take a break from main roster because I'm just that burnt out and that disgusted by it. And it's yeah. sad because I adore a lot of the talent that is on there that I so watched. Yeah, that I, it's part of the reason why I still put myself through it. I completely stopped watching Raw. SmackDown, I'll still watch, but besides that, it's only pay per views. Yeah, like I signed yeah. up for I signed up for Stardom World this week because I really have been wanting to get into Stardom for you know quite a while, nice. and and I watched um, I think it was their May third show, and I was like, oh my god, I love this! Like I can spend an hour and a half, you know, randomly watching Stardom stuff, you know, on Monday night instead of spending three hours being miserable watching Raw, and, you know, like, I talked about this on my own podcast, you know, like, I listed out a bunch of promotions and said, if you're burnt out on WWE, here yeah. you go, if you, if you like more hardcore stuff, you know, watch this, if you, you know, because to me, to me, there, there's no use in just putting yourself through three hours of hell when you can, you know, be positive about something else. Rage sister. I mean, I literally watched the 75 minute rise. I don't think they do this on a weekly basis. I literally watched the 75 minute and interrupted rise of Iron Woman match between Mercedes Martinez and Tessa Blanchard. Two trailblazers in women's wrestling today. That match was freaking incredible. Tessa Blanchard, her character development and the way she just sells herself in the ring. Freaking phenomenal. She's amazing. Oh yeah, hey. R- remember how dead? Remember how Rise wanted to promote that free free seventy five minute Iron Women match? They said, "You want an alternative to Raw? Here's this free wrestling match we're giving away." <laughs> and it was that, brilliant. That was amazing. And Tessa is amazing. I adore her. I adore her. You know, like that no bullshit. I I know I'm the shit attitude. Like yeah. I just love it i love it oh yeah speaking of tessa uh there was a report that a story came out that sasha banks actually wanted to challenge her i would love that that'd be an amazing match that would be that i would love to see that those two personas at their finest facing off against each other there's the magic sasha banks is looking for well i would tear the house down for sure no kidding yeah you you're gonna need a really big building for that because (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> those two attitudes in the same ring together, like, you're going to get some crazy shit. <laughs> uh, Courtney, I don't think those rings contain those two attitudes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and here's the thing. Here's the thing I always imagined. Imagine if they did that match and it was produced by Triple H and the best wrestling minds that know how to do a big wrestling match like this. They could go... Iron Woman match with those two, and I would not be disappointed. I would put, in all honesty, you know who I would put in charge of that match? I would put Finley, because Finley has been the one who, for since the Attitude Era, has been getting in the ring in the afternoons before shows with the women, working with them, trying to make them better. He has been an advocate for the women for now going on decades. Thank and God. he's still part of the business. Yeah, and, and, and also, in charge of that. yeah, also, I would also recommend Tyson Kidd, considering his Seth Rollins produced matches he's made. Yeah. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Oh, my gosh. But yeah, that would, that would be a phenomenal dream match for a lot of people. Yes, it would be. There are so many dream matches that WWE hasn't done yet or have done that either A, under-delivered, or B, you think won't deliver. Or, 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 or they what? overproduced it. You know, Nakamura and Styles. Oh, uh, that was... Oh, my bad. God. Don't, don't remind me of the fact that I it really hope Rollins and Styles doesn't end up the same way. Yeah. Like, oh, please. Let's be honest. Let's be honest. Rollins and Styles is only happening so early because of Double or Nothing. AEW Double or Nothing. Now 
Yeah, yeah that'll be a weekend money. after Money in the Bank. Yeah. The same yeah. week as Money in the Bank. I mean, literally, if AEW Dumb or Nothing wasn't happening that week, do you honestly think we'd be getting Seth versus AJ? It would no, we'd be getting Rollins versus Corbin. Hell no. Hell no. This is a match designed to cater to the smart. It's, it's designed to cater to the smart who has been dreaming about this dream match for years. Yeah. It's designed to cater to them who those same fa- those same type of fans are the ones that are AEW fans that are so excited about AEW. And so the elite. I'm going to change my profile picture wear my AEW shirt after this freaking week. <laughs> um, yeah, like in another dream match that with Tessa would be Tessa versus Charlotte. Like, oh my god, oh my Just god, the generation it's, stars going at it. Oh yes, yes, take my money, take all of it, take all of it. Uh, the four horsewomen stand against our match against Taya Valkyrie. Like, oh, you think you're horse four horsewomen? I'm true four horsewomen. I got that in my blood. I'm like, yes, give me that match. Now that's mm-hmm. the match I want to see Charlotte in. Not Charlotte versus Becky for the 688 time. Yep. Yeah. Also, there was one time I was considering doing a, a Twitter post where I was going to tag a bunch of people and say, okay, if you were able to, which match would, which match would you like to see between a wrestler and a comic book character, or a, su- a superhero character? And I was thinking like, okay, how about Becky Lynch and Black Canary from DC Comics? <laughs> I would do Alexa Bliss do versus Mac- Harley Quinn. I do Drew McIntyre oh, versus brilliant. Thor. Perfect. What thing? Drew McIntyre versus Thor. I mean, you literally. Yeah, I can't say like if if Drew McIntyre was ever offered a deal for Hollywood by the MCU to say put him in Thor, do it. Yes, he all he has to do is dye his hair and beard blonde, and he'll look exactly like Thor. He really would. He's coming out Braveheart every time he freaking comes out. That go. Uh, they've toned it down a little back. bit. Yeah, and this was the same company that was considering doing a big push for Drew McIntyre, but then like, oh, well, Roman's back, so Drew McIntyre, you need to be our victim for this. Ah. What do I need to do to put Drew back Maybe on Maybe he'll win money in the bank, I don't know. Let's be real, it's going to be Baron Corbin. No! No! It should be no. Andrade, realistically. Yeah, but Sally's going to be Corbin never, because it's Corbin. I'd, I'd rather them just have Corbin challenge for the title and him win money in the bank. I feel like after what we saw on Monday, it's going to be Baron Corbin versus Seth Rollins. That extreme. All right. I'd rather it be that way because I don't want him as money in the bank, but Vince doesn't care. He doesn't care I about mean, the fans. Why? Well, I could fuck you. That's why. Bank, right? He lost to Jinder Mahal. And that only happened, and that whole, and that whole humiliation Baron Corbin went through with Ginger Mahal happened because he spoke out against the doctor that almost killed CM Punk. God. Well, what did you say? Simple as that. And he it's insulted amazing. a veteran, a military veteran, I think. Yeah, I think that too. But I think that I think the rain report was that yeah, Vince was more mad about him insulting his favorite doctor instead of the military veteran because that f, f- logic. I've heard that Doctor's done some shady things in the past with CM Punk Doctor. Oh, yeah, yeah. Here's the thing. He confessed in court that he broke some major laws. And yet he's still in WWE. Oh, God. Yeah, and he's still in WWE. That company is so corrupt. Uh, Did you forget the whole, hey, let's go ahead and demand their social media account password because we're that messed up. Sadly, like I said, I asked around and they said, yeah, it's sadly legal. If it's in their contracts, though, you can demand it. Jeez. There is no such thing as privacy anymore anywhere. Unfortunately. Golly. All right, so let's talk about, uh, what are we going to talk about? We are talking about WrestleMania. NXT TakeOver, um, so we got the whole UK title picture now. We got Walter and Pete Dunne. Do Which was awesome. See, do you guys ever see Pete Dunne move into the main roster? Um, Possibly. 
sadly, but here's the thing. There are, but he also fits the 205 weight. Oh. Okay, look. Let me say this, okay? Because you know He what? should not, he does not deserve to be wasted away on that show, which the, no the one problem, even watches. The biggest flaw with 205 Live is it almost feels like you're there and you're going to go nowhere else, okay? They don't let them branch out. They don't let them reach their full potential. They don't, like, really let you learn about these guys. They don't use them enough. It's not once in a while when you see them in NXT UK and NXT, but if you go to Monday Night Raw, like Senator Alexander Buddy Murphy, you fade out security. Oh, speaking of Buddy Murphy, he made his debut this week on SmackDown and they cut it out. Yeah, so it was on YouTube. What the hell? Wrestling's best kept secret. We're not going to use him. Yeah, brilliant. And We're trying to spot, keep like... him a secret. They're taking they're that to him to, literally. They're trying to keep him a secret. That's what they're trying to do. Yeah, well, how long do you keep a secret? Vince uh, can't keep his secrets. We all know what he likes. Yeah, blonde. Also, his best friend is Donald Trump. Oh, oh no. Oh, oh no. Right. Oh, no. Well, we're going to get political, are we? No. No, 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 no. no, no. Okay. No, Jake already yeah. fulfilled the political stance when he was talking about Saudi Arabia's government. Well, I mean, let's just say this. The prince owns Vince. Yeah, in fact, it was reported that Third Day has no control over that contract with the government. What? Yeah, d- the prince does own WWE, essentially. He could... <laughs> yeah. Vince signed a deal, and now he has no control over the contract. About the frog so he can make good booking decisions. Yep. Oh, so how long before we have a Saudi Arabian announce team as part of the international announce team announced every week on uh, every pay-per-view? Uh, I give it a year. <laughs> yeah, maybe. If that. I mean, like, they probably could have done it earlier if, say, Mustafa Ali never got that concussion. Yeah, supposedly. So we got ten matches for Money in the Bank. And we got... So basically we got eight matches and two Money in the Bank ladder matches. So let's just go right around the board and talk about the Money in the Bank ladder match. Men, who do you guys want, keyword want, to win the men's Money in the Bank ladder match? Courtney, I'll start with you. Um, if I'm being honest, I really don't know who's in it right now because, like, I'm that tuned out. I respect <laughs> that, and I don't blame you. I'll tell you uh, who it is. It's, uh, let's see, Baron Corbin, uh, Ricochet, uh, Drew McIntyre, uh, I'm, damn, I'm blanking too. Sami Zayn, Andrade, and Almas, because that's his real name, and uh, oh, Randy yeah. Orton. Um, if I had my pick like, out you're of those, forgetting someone. I think you're what? forgetting Braun. Yeah, that him too. But really, no one cares oh, anymore. Yeah. No one cares. He's not even gonna win. If if I had my pick out of those list of guys, I would pick Drew McIntyre strictly for the fact that he deserves a title run. At this point, oh, yeah. Long he, for that guy. he he went he went out on the to impact. He went out on the independent circuit and he kicked WCW. ass. Yeah, and he and he came back and he is such a force to be reckoned with now oh, that yeah. you know you know like if you really want a title ring that people are going to tune in to see who's going to get to take it off the Scottish psychopath. Guess what? Drew McIntyre is your guy to do that because you make him, you book him to where he doesn't get beat, and it's like you can't beat him because he's that big, and and he's that powerful. Yeah. And then, and then when the belt does come off of him, then that's your huge. Oh my God, this person, whoever it is that takes it off, then oh my God, they fucking did it. You know? Courtney, you realize what you just did there? You just created possibly two stars just from one encounter. And therefore, That's- you are Vince's mortal enemy. <laughs> that that that's that why. Never happen. <laughs> yeah, that's why. Like, like I have people all the time that are like, you know, like they'll send me the LinkedIn link of like, there's a new creative writing spot. You should go in in WWE. You should go work for it. I'm like, I'm work for that toxic environment. I'm like, fuck that shit. I'm like, yeah, what makes me want to quit from the first day I get there? Yeah. I'm I'm like until Triple H takes over. 
thanks, okay. but no thanks. You'll burn me out and they'll make me rewrite the show like two hours before it starts. Just tell you, hey, do you like this idea? Let me know, yes or no. I'm trying to sleep. Let me sleep. And, and, then, and then you got, and then remember that video they posted unlisted? Oh my yeah, god. I don't even care about wrestling or Hollywood writers, all of them, yeah. mostly. No, I was sitting thinking like, this is like some North Korea propaganda type AEW bullshit. AEW got people who actually know wrestling and care about it for their man. Yeah. And, and didn't and didn't Cody say in an interview that the wrestlers are the writers? Yes, he did. Good lord. So basically, he's taking the old ECW approach of, "Hey, wrestlers, do you want to help write the show?" Hold on. Speaking of AEW, Tony Khan did an interview recently discussing his plans for the company. Yeah, with Chris Van Lay, it was awesome. Yeah, it was a he, he has a he five year plan. Something. Hold up, I'll be right back. I'm I'm gonna get like the post about it when it goes over all the key points. Okay. Yeah, because um, there was a key, there was a lot of key points there. He is definitely an anti McMahon according to that interview. He's a wrestling fan. He doesn't want to be an on screen character. Yes, he's the top guy. You know, no all say all be up. Dot dot dot. But it's not like he's really the only one with input. He's consistently in discussions with his executive vice president, Young Bucks, Kenny Omega, Chris Jericho even, Cody. And they want to make this a different environment. They even said they don't want to do competition with WWE. They want to be their own thing. Now you tell me one flaw right now with Tony Khan's perspective and direction with AEW. I dare you. I, I can't find one. And, and what I like about Tony Khan and this can be said a little bit more for him than it can be for past, you know, rich people who have decided to yeah. start a wrestling company or, or buy into a wrestling company, yeah. um, that he is actually a fan. Like, I listened to that same interview, like, I watched it, and I was just so impressed and with, with him and his knowledge of the business and, and that the, the fact that he is actually a real fan and the fact that... <laughs> Yeah, and the fact that he is going to let, you know, Matt, Nick, Cody, Kenny, you know, he's going to let Andy. them, you know, yeah, he's going to let them run this. He's he's going to, you know, he's going to sit back and he's going to do the right thing and let them run this because they know what they're doing because obviously they do because this whole, like being the elite has been just this phenomenon. And yes. And, like, they get people on board on these trends and stuff. Like, the whole SCU thing. Like, now SCU is everywhere you go to, like, independent yeah. shows when they show up. You know, um, the whole full gear challenge thing now with Adam Page. You know, like, they know how to do it. And they know how to market. And they know how to turn things into trends and make things popular. Yeah, like the and, books and the accessibility thing. Yeah, like, the and that is one thing that I just commend AEW on my husband served in Iraq and Afghanistan and he and he has PTSD and we were at Wrestlemania and we were pretty close to the front stage and like every time that pyro would go off you know like he would jump a little bit you know it made me kind of feel bad and it kind of took away from the day and to see them you know with that culture city um partnership where they're gonna have like the earphones and the noise canceling earphones and like those rooms where you can go to kind of you know get away from it you know that that to me is amazing and i just commend brandy and cody you know on this partnership all right all right guys i found the article about the key points oh okay go for it all right so this is very promising it'll be easy to watch which makes me think it'll be like one to two hours okay it'll be a sports-based fast-paced product Wrestling. And wins wins and losses will matter. Wow. Huzzah. We I wonder who, who wonder who wonder I wonder I wonder who thinks that that wins and losses don't matter. <laughs> Titles will be made a big deal. It'll be a different presentation of matches similar to like UFC giving you like that big fight feel. Okay. Level Fans will have more engagement with what is happening in the ring. They're going to listen to their fan base. We're the authority. We are? He knows how much title there there will be and how, and how much thought has gone into it. He okay. uh, he loves wrestling, unlike hey. Vince. They have better financial resources than any company in wrestling history. They got the cons, man. Cons! 
Ben! <laughs> He'll have the final say in every decision with the company. Okay. And he wants to give them the best quality of their life with less time in the road and more time to spend with their family. So when they come to work, it'll be worth it. So basically, they want to do the off-season that people have been advocating for for years in WWE. And they want to do everything WWE is not doing, which is great. Well, not me up. I'm officially on board. Courtney? I'm on board. I mean, like, and I've advocated for an off-season as well. Like, yeah. like, they have so many people signed right now that you don't need everybody on the road at once. You know, like what you could do is, is you could build storylines around like the same chunk of talent for, you know, like a few months, then give that chunk of talent like six to eight weeks off and then bring them back on. You know, like you, like you don't have to just have an off season where there's no WWE programming. No. You yeah, can, but you like. You do I, it in blocks and chunks and groups of talent. Yeah. And like burn a, them out. Like a rotation period. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like I did talk about an off season idea. I had said that if they ever did do a straight up off season where they don't do a WWE show, I was like, okay, it should be around Thanksgiving week all the way up to New Year's because that's usually the smallest amount. That's usually the dates where the viewership is not as good. That's because they're yeah. focused on their family and Christmas. Also, Eric, did you who got did you hear who got banned on Twitter again? Yeah, I heard. Oh my god! Oh, he's that guy he, he, is. That guy is really... Oh, already? Yeah, I figured. Already? Oh, my God. Wait, wait, wait. This what guy happened? just can't yeah. get out of his own way. What happened? So, do you know that guy that... By the name of DJ Storms. Do you know who that is? Yes, I do. Well, he keeps getting banned and he keeps coming back. Wait, how do you keep getting banned and coming back? He because just... he, because he's, he's not a good person. He, he says a lot of things that should not be said to other people on this app. Actually, there is a loophole in the, in the Twitter system that I discovered. What? what? Apparently, you can make a new account, but you can still use the same email account you have, but you can put a period in between the words, and it will work. What? Yeah. You can trick the system until only have two accounts. Yeah you, yeah, you can legitimately trick the system. Wow. What a loophole in the Twitter I think person. Twitter should ban him permanently. I mean, if you report it enough... If, he if keeps you're getting suspended. Visual, this is like his sixth time getting suspended. Jeez, you figure you learn after the first time. But then again, Vince McMahon, he's been doing... He doesn't problem. learn his lesson. He's more delusional than Vince. Oh. Well... Yeah, I actually had followed him once upon a time when things were somewhat normal. Like, the like the one thing I didn't do, like a lot of people were doing, were calling him out. Like, I just mostly stayed away because I did not want to get involved in drama. The thing is, I, I went about it the opposite drama. way, as you know. Yes. Yeah, I try I try to avoid drama, okay? No hate, appreciate. Let's all be equal, civil minded individuals, respect one another's opinions, but let's not, you know, just call somebody out blatantly for some stupid reason using an irrational terminology. That's yeah. All I have to say about that. Okay, so speaking of which, why don't we talk about the double or nothing card? So it looks like we have one to be professor. Seven matches and the Casino Battle Royale. I don't know about you all, but this Casino Battle Royale extremely interests me. Not I wasn't that excited at first, but then I saw what it was. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I'm more hyped now. The way they're doing it has me has me excited. Yeah, the unique rules, the way they're actually going to get the participants out there, and uh, also the fact they're actually going to lead to a title opportunity. I got and number 21 is probably going to be someone big. MJF. I'm thinking maybe Marty. Actually, no, nah, we'll still be doing best of the Super Juniors, but we'll see. Yeah, I'm about to say, he did call his best friend the last being the Elite, but I mean, was it Marty's girl? But I think after best of the Super Juniors, Marty's going to be there any day. You really think Marty's girl is going to AEW? Yeah, that's one of the reasons why he has not won the world title in Ring of Honor or NWA. And that's why they haven't really been, they're, they're starting to tone him down a little bit, like his, his role. And- and they're teasing a fourth member. Like, I'm thinking, like, this fourth member of Villain Enterprises is maybe going to take over the faction when he leaves. Yeah. Who um, could it be? Take, over, take out Buddy Skrull. Who could that be? Um, not sure. But I'm thinking that maybe number 21, because, like, in that John Mosley video, if, if there was, like, dice, right? And this was, like, a casino yeah. battle royale. Oh so, so maybe... 
Maybe I'm going down the rabbit hole a little bit too much, but maybe number 21 could be John Moxley. Holy I don't shit. think it'll be him, but I'd love that. that uh, also, that. yeah, the idea of John Moxley being in AEW, like, you got Jimmy Havoc. Let's go all out with it. I'm about to say, I would love to see John Moxley versus freaking Jimmy Havoc. Take my money. And yeah. my friend who's anti-AEW, he is on podcast poll saying this. If John Moxley shows up in AEW, he will actually watch the product. He's not, like, a fan of it, but he's willing to give it a chance. Yes, he I is. like those people. You don't have to be a huge fan of it, but at least give it a chance. Exactly. Yeah, and like... Right but, off. And I, but I follow his account on Instagram who's shitting on it saying it's going to fail. I can't wait to see what excuses people have when it fails. Well, some people are dirtless that have no concept of reality and don't wish... He's, he, he only watches Dead Eddie. What a team. surprise. Oh, wait, um, okay, that's not actually the worst thing you can do on Instagram, like, there was that- Someone t- photoshopped bald hair onto Roman when he had cancer. Uh, yeah, wow. I saw that. That was terrible, obviously. I mean, yeah. And, and then there no, was, like- no defending that. Yeah, and then there was that incident when Charlotte was added to the triple threat match at WrestleMania. Someone actually had said they wished that the other flair they wished that Charlotte had died in the other flair's like place. Charlotte, though. She's one of my she's one of my favorite cool. women. I understand that her push can be annoying, but still. Yeah, but the fact that, that there was this guy that was saying, No, they killed WrestleMania for me. I need to have my pleasure in this. I need to wish that Red Flair was not the one dead here. Don't ever you mean Reed Flair. Right? Yeah, I, I got that mixed up. I keep also by the way when people use the argument they're only there because of their last name, it's stupid because there have been plenty of famous people's wrestling sons and daughters who, like, didn't make it. Yeah, yeah even like, Sasha Banks. Like, look at well. her. She's related to Snoop Dogg. I'm about to say, she's related to a freaking rapper. What does that have to do with anything? Snoop Dogg's never wrestled Dan his wife. And plus, uh, and plus, did, wasn't it said that Charlotte only got in the industry because of her brother's death? Uh, Courtney? You can... Um... Well, she was. Never mind. It, it, kind, it kind of inspired her more, you know. It kind of made her want to do it for him because yeah, Reed Reed did want to be a wrestler. Reed was, you know, out there on the independent scene. He was really trying and struggling, and you know, and he, and he unfortunately passed away. And so it, it has, you know, inspired Charlotte a lot. And you know, for anyone to bring. You know, like he, I even got pissed off at WWE when they brought Reed into it. Like, even though Charlotte, may, Charlotte and Rick may have been okay with it, but I wasn't. Actually, um, oh man, that incident where Paige says that her brother didn't last as long. I was like, oh my god, uh, can you stop with the death angles, man? Enough of that. Yeah, I'm like, this is just creepy. It's just, it's just not cool. And you know, like fans online these days, there is this very toxic culture. Where it's like, how can I push someone's buttons the hardest? Like, they try hard to push your buttons. They try to get you angry. They try to do the most blatantly offensive bullshit to get a reaction so that they get that engagement. Which is why, like, with this one dude that keeps coming back, I've ultimately said, like, even though this guy really did piss me off the other day, because there was this one girl on Twitter that he legitimately had, like, in tears on the verge of a nervous breakdown, you know, like, like, yeah, the same dude that we were discussing earlier. DJ Storm. Yeah. So, and it pissed me off, but you know, at the end of the day, if when you even so much as retweet a tweet, that's, that's very toxic and say, go report this. You're given that person engagement. You're given that person a negative attention and they want, any attention, whether it be negative or positive. So what we need to do as a community is we need to stop feeding into that. We need to just ignore it. Let the hate be spe- let the hate, let the bullshit be spewed into a vacuum. Ignore it. If you if you feel the need to report the account, but otherwise leave that shit to have no engagement because you know what they're doing? They're sitting there, they're clicking that engagement button next to that tweet and they're looking at the engagements going up and they're just laughing while the rest of us are getting pissed off and angry. Yeah, you know? they're getting stronger from our dismal taste because in the end they think they're winning because they're the ones that are getting all the hype. Exactly. Yeah. And, and, and like, here's the thing. Back to the whole death angle they pulled with Reed Flair, um, 
here's the thing. WWE legitimately came out and said, oh, uh, the death angle, uh, that wasn't our fault. That was Charlotte's fault. That was her idea. It's not like we're her boss or anything. Yeah, I was like, like seriously, you're gonna throw your own employee under the bus and say it was her fault and say you had nothing to do with this, even though you're the ones that approved of this? I'm a genius. God, you're a delusional, cynical old man with no heart and soul. It seems anymore that has lost all touch of reality and all mobile fiber of being that should be retired somewhere, sitting in a rocking chair. Not firing anyone under the WB or a wrestler of any kind ever again. Also, um, didn't Vince McMahon, during when John Oliver talked about the whole independent contractors and insurance stuff, he showed a clip that Vince publicly said in an interview that he does not feel responsible for any wrestlers that died in his ring, which yeah, means Owen did. Hart is not, not important to him. Yeah, and as soon as the journalist tried to say, shouldn't you think you should feel like any moral, like, you know, responsibility? What do you do? He had, like, a child knock the papers out of his hand. Yeah, when I saw it, I was like, okay, I can't tell if he's playing the character McMahon or he's actually being legit here. According to what I've heard, Vince McMahon is not only a character, he is a legitimate, horrible human being. Yeah, and, and like... And, and Fightful did a very comprehensive analysis regarding the idea of, of insurance and 401ks and protecting the workers. And they wrote up that, yes, at the end of the day, WWE will only spend $26 million on this and they could afford it. So why haven't they? Because that would require ind individuality and Vince hates that. Oh, hey, Vince. Might as well ban the word individuality. Oh, by the way, let's talk about banned words. So they brought the word belt back, but apparently belts are now made of Velcro. What are your thoughts on the whole Velcro belt? It's just further cheapening of the product and further cheapening of the integrity of those titles. Like, speaking of WWE, yeah. someone else quit. Who quit? Wait. Did you hear about Percy, Percy Watson quit commentary? Oh, Watson yeah, I heard that. Thing? Oh, Percy Watson quit? Yeah. Yeah. I think oh. Beth Phoenix is doing commentary for them. Yeah, oh, she oh, is. okay, but... Wow. I, I feel like they should put Renee part. Young in NXT. I mean, Jeez. she's not really... She, she would at least be given freedom on NXT. Well, again, that would require individuality, which, of course, Vince hates. So, there's that. Yeah, and plus, I'm surprised she still has a job in WWE knowing that John Ma knowing that Dean Ambrose left. You would think that Vince McMahon being vindictive would try to target Renee Young. Well, imagine the negative PR you would get, though, if he did that with the whole women's evolution. Uh, didn't Vince McMahon condemn Renee Young once upon a time because she was barefooted all the time and didn't wear boots? That's... Yeah, I'm still trying to wonder, like, okay, Vince, is this hurting anybody? She drives without, without shoes on. Like, okay, yeah, that's a little strange, but is it really worth mocking her on television for? And what business is that of his anyway? There's no rhyme or reason to it. All right, the hell with WWE and their negative logic, okay? NXT, NXT UK, 205 Live, there's a reason why WWE will still fry... Thank you, Triple H, and they're probably the only reason where, especially after I see Double or Nothing, I may only watch those literally and not watch the other live, because SmackDown Live is slowly falling apart from Monday Night Raw thanks to the wild card and Roman Reigns overexposure and the Roman Reigns agenda. Yeah, here's so the that, thing about that. It was cool seeing the Usos back on SmackDown actually serious. Yeah. I will say that, yes. Let's now go back to Usi Hot or whatever. Oh, speaking of which, let's go ahead and talk about the Samantha Live Tag Team Tiles. Wait, be I'm before so... we get into that, before we get into that, there was one thing I wanted to bring up. Apparently, heading into the Fox Network, WWE is going to bring a third agenda onto the brand. What? Yeah, we already have the Roman agenda, we already have the Charlotte agenda. Guess who might be the third agenda? Brock Lesnar? Yes. Oh, no! Because that was their alternative since Ronda Rousey's out of action like, for now. Draw the MMA fans? Yeah, pretty much. They wanted to bring Ronda Rousey to SmackDown, but since, you know, she left and she's also injured, they were like, okay, then we'll give you Brock Lesnar. How long until Brock wins the title? I give it about six months at best. Do you think it will happen at SummerSlam? 
No, I don't think so. No, honest. I'm pretty sure they're going to do that afterwards. I do see Brock wrestling at Saudi Arabia. Because we all know the Prince wants in there. Dick, Eric, Courtney, I'm on par right now. I am not watching the Saudi Arabia show. Neither am I. I refuse I, to. You can bring Goldberg back. You can bring anyone back. I don't give a shit. I'm not going to watch. Um, and I'm not predicting anything on it either. The I watched the first show because I was willing to, you know, be like, okay, the people of Saudi Arabia, you know, like they're not personally responsible for the fucked up shit that they're, that they're you know, right. Prince and their kings do. You like, you know, the greatest but, Royal Rumble was okay. I mean, it wasn't anything terrible, but once the I news came well, out, that's what? when. But but once the whole Jamal Khashoggi um, incident happened, I totally flipped. I was like, Jamal. you know what? I was like, I was like, you know what? This man, he may not have been a naturalized American citizen, but he lived here. He paid taxes. He was here legally. Yeah. And just to get a fucking marriage license, he had to go over there, and he was tortured and killed. And, and you, dismembered. Yeah, and you have no problem with that, Vince? And you and you have no problem going over there and basically putting on a birthday party for these same idiots? Didn't Renee Young do commentary at Crown Jewel? Yeah, that was likely I'm because... They didn't make her wear anything, like a hijab. I think it's because the whole, you know, guardianship of a man thing, and, well, Renee Young is owned by a legitimate baby. God. Oh, God. We talking about Vince? Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, let's talk about Sami Zayn and how he's Vince McMahon's mouthpiece. What are your thoughts on Sami Zayn? I, I like well, the gimmick. I, lo I like well, the Sami Zayn character besides that. Well, Sami actually posted uh, nine hours ago about Syria getting bombed again. Oh, God. And He's Saudi a great Arabia, guy in real life who, who cares about the world. And and Saudi Arabia has a lot to do with that. Right. So, you know, I don't know. I don't know if he's being made to do this because he is, you know, a Syrian Muslim. And Syrian Muslims versus Saudi Arabian Muslims has been a thing been a for, for years. Decades. It's been a for, for no, since we're talking like Bible times. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. like, you know, and I don't know if that has something to do with it. I don't know what this is, but, you know, him being Vince's mouthpiece, like, I just don't freaking like it. Because, like, to me, it just, he went from happy-go-lucky, ska dancing, Sammy, to this. It's like, where the hell did this come from? You really wonder if Sammy actually likes doing this, too. Me, too. I legitimately sometimes wonder if he is going out there and he's just being flippant and sarcastic with it because that's how he really feels. He's like, he's like, I'm just being sarcastic. I'm, I'm just, you know. Yeah, and, and, this, and isn't this this the same company that had a that had a commentator whose name I will not mention until you figure it out that said this and I quote, "I would rather be kidnapped by ISIS than have dinner with Sami Zayn." Oh, oh no 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 no! Oh jeez! Oh, you wanna know who said that? Oh, don't, don't, don't mention that. his name. Don't mention his name. I can't. We don't talk about don't that bully. We don't talk about him. Right to censor. Right to censor. Eh, eh, his eh, name right is right John. That's all I'll say. Oh, oh that. Yeah. John Bradshaw. Oh, <laughs> that's enough. That's enough. We know who it is. Yeah. Oh, let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, when I heard that, I was like, oh, dear God. Now, imagine if this happened when the Saudi shows were going on. And, of oh, course, Lord we're God. not going to talk about what he did with Mauro Ronaldo. We're not going to talk let's, about let's that. Let's just thank God. Mauro Ronaldo is in NXT, and he decided to stay on as NXT's voice. He decided to stay on and sign Even Vince didn't like it either. Vince said, oh, he's not my type of commentator. Of he's not he's Michael not. Cole. He doesn't want to be a robot. He's not a robot. He's He, he doesn't do he's, what I tell him to say. No, no, he's not the... Like, I've said this about Michael Cole. Michael Cole is like one of those pull string dolls like we used to get when we were kids and like you yes. pull it and like it would say like one line oh, or it would say like dog. five lines. <laughs> like, like his... Like Michael Cole... Vince Vintage! Vince pulls that string. Vintage pulls the string again. It's the big dog. It's pulls the string time. again. It's boss time. You know, like that is what Michael Cole is. And 
And that's why Vince likes him so much because he'll say whatever the fuck Vince tells him to. Mara yeah. Ronaldo is coming from MMA and is called legitimate combat sports and knows how to call it in a way that is both emotional and tells you the in-ring technical side of it. And like he does Ian it Rickabani. so beautifully well. Yeah, exactly. Like Ian Riccoboni and Ring of Honor, who I also I love and adore Ian. Yeah, and, and, and like and like right. there's so many and like Marvinell's done so many memorable lines because he's being himself, you know, Mamma Mia or you know or or when he was talking about the six man ta- the six man ladder match of NXT NXT oh, a few years know. back where he Wild says plug. This yeah. when he said this, uh, this is NXT's version of the Infinity War. I love that. that was what was brilliant. that? Was that during War Games? No, no, no. This oh, was the North American the ladder game. ladder match. Yeah, oh, yeah, does, that was great. He does those current and up to date pop culture references so well. Like he just he just knows how to how to marry everything together just so beautifully to where like there are matches like. I will be watching it. He's got to make an Avengers Endgame reference during the next takeover. <laughs> yeah. And, and like, I'll, I'll watch it. And I've done this before. I have watched a match where Moro is really calm and it's really good. And I've turned the volume all the way down to yeah. just have, to have no commentary. And then, and it's not as, it, it's not really as good. But then I add Moro Ronaldo and his commentary in. I and I watch it again. I roster shows more. I do, I do that, and then like instantly, like he starts going, "Mama me and stuff. Like I start getting chills, and it like just adds a whole another level of of beauty to what you're seeing. Yes, he adds excitement. He adds interest to the story. He adds overall just a love of watching wrestling. He lets you know who he stands by impartially, but you do realize. Basically, what he's telling you, who's the villain? Who's the hero? What's going on here? Are you kidding me? I mean, they're still up on their feet. That freaking Tom- Tommaso Ciampa and Johnny Gargano street fight, Marinella was on fire. Marinella yeah. was unbelievable. Yeah, he was on fire that entire match. Like, I was like, oh, my God. I was like, halfway through it, I was like, take a breath, Marv. Take a breath. Take a breath, dude. But I know you can get into it. see the YouTube <laughs> compilation reactions of Marinella and alongside Nigel McGinnis and uh, Percy Watson. And I remember uh, the Matt Riddle and Rizzochi dream match. And, uh, no, no, no. It was Aleister Black versus uh, Tommaso Ciampa. And he talked about, first of all, like, did he just kick out of the fairy tale ending? Marvin Nettle, I think, helped both be Percy Watson and Nigel McGinnis be just as authentic. Because when all three of them react to something together, and you actually see that, it's beautiful. And here's yeah. the special part. You don't hear the commentators bickering at each other like Corey Grace does with Byron Saxton. Corey Grace and Byron Saxton. Yeah, you don't hear nonsensical, pointless bickering over stupid nonsense, taking away action from the ring, devaluing the match and the superstars even more. Yeah, yeah like, like there was that one moment um, where SmackDown commentary totally lost their shit because of because of Corey Graves and Byron Saxton. Mandy Rose. Like, like yeah. there was there was that moment like where he was like, you know, like Byron was like, maybe he's just he's sometimes when you go through trauma, you know, like you just block it out to protect yourself and he's like and then Corey or or Todd goes or Tom Phillips goes, Is that why you don't date? And then it just totally killed commentary. Like like you could hear Tom and Corey just losing their shit laughing. <laughs> and it was just like, oh my God. Like, like that's, it, it, it turns commentary into a circus like that. Like with Moro, you know, like you see those video clips and you see him like jumping up and down and stuff. And you see like Nigel and Percy just all chill, chilled out. Just like they're just calling this. Yeah. And then you see Moro and he's just all excited. And you see like the energy kind of siphon into siphon off into both Percy and Nigel and it just works yeah. beautifully and I wish that main roster commentary was more like that because you know main roster commentary is nothing but you know Michael Cole bickering with Corey or Corey bookering with Re- bookering, bickering, bickering with Renee yeah bickering well, with Renee Corey and it's with Byron Saxon and Renee Young Tom Phillips and Michael Cole they're supposed to be the play-by-play guys so they kind of try to ignore it 
Yeah. Yeah, and, and then like, I, oh sorry. I hated when they did this to Renee when they were like, "What is your husband up to? You live with him." Blah blah blah. She's like, I, she's like, she's like, I don't know. I don't know what that crazy motherfucker does. <laughs> you know. I like, remember they wanted to slap Corey. Me too. Like I was like, girl, come on, just slap someone. Just tell it already. Break kayfabe. In fact, in fact, here's the thing I was hoping for when this whole storyline was going on with Ambrose and then they were starting to somewhat incorporate Renee. I was hoping Renee or even Byron Saxon when he was being picked on by Corey Gray to do the Joey Styles moment where he just slaps Jerry Lauer and then just shoots on the microphone. Oh, yeah, except don't quit. Man, that was quite a fight bomb too by Joey Styles. Uh, speaking of which, we gotta talk about the name. CM Punk. Do you see him coming to AEW? I think if he comes back to wrestling, it's definitely going to be with AEW, not with WWE. That's for sure. Yeah, especially after that whole masked man that, you know, Ace and Steel was... the doctor was... is still there that he has terrible history with, so... Oh, yeah, remember the one doctor that said, oh, I'm just going to, like, you know... I the Z-Packs, like, he, he told him to finish a match even when he had a concussion. Yeah. He's like, okay, I'm going to give you this. And he ends up crapping his pants live on television during a SmackDown taping. Yeah, and, and then like, and, and then like you, then you hear the story that ever since that whole mask guy coming in doing the GTS, and now all of a sudden Vince wants to bring CM Punk back. I was like, sure, it's not because you value him; it's because you don't want him to go to AEW. Yeah, and Punk has Punk apparently has been doing with the Joey Ryan. You heard that story, right? They want to sign him so he doesn't go to AEW. Yeah. That's what they're doing with everybody. Courtney yeah. Um, I don't like Joey Ryan though. I mean. But yeah, Punk, has, Punk apparently has done this whole appear in a mask thing. He's done this like a few times before, apparently. And um, and for sure it was him because same outfit, um, same exact outfit, you know, same build, everything else. Like I was like, that's him. Like people stopped trying to say it wasn't him. It was him. And... You know, like, I could see Punk going to AEW, but honestly, I think Punk is just to a point where he's just happy doing those mass pop-ins and just getting that little mini rush, and, and that's enough for him right now. But I see, like, maybe in a couple of years, like, when he realizes MMA is not going to work out for him because, I'm sorry, dude, you're, 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 you're older, yeah, and, yeah. you know, and... You know, you've, you've lost a lot of your muscle mass and a lot of your power to fight at the division you want to fight at. Right. And, you know, it, it might be time to just give it up and maybe come to AEW and do, like, you know, the major shows that they have for, you know, special singles matches with, you know, somebody like a Cody Rhodes or somebody like, a, um, like, I would even love a CM Punk versus Hangman Page match. Like, yeah, I it, why. in fact, this is what I kept saying. This is what I kept saying. I was like, imagine if CM Punk goes to Double or Nothing, where's the where's the masked, masked Atari he was wearing, then attacks Kenny Omega. Oh my god. Oh, yes. Knees. Yeah, the GTS knee versus the um, V-Trigger. Yeah. V-Trigger's got to be one of the most brutal moves in wrestling. Good grief. I know, like, I was watching the other night, um, because... Like Jay White's taken off a month, and yeah. like, um, and like, there's a lot of fans are like, I'm gonna, I miss him already, and I'm like, okay, I'll post like two matches a week to you know tide you over until he comes back, I and and I month. posted the one of Jay and Kenny, where Jay won the U.S. title from him, right. and just the amount of freaking V triggers that Jay took, I was like. Son of a bitch! How is that? How is he not just legitimately knocked out? Because like, and he's smiling throughout it. And yeah, he's smiling yeah. throughout it. Like, I was like, holy shit! Like watching this again, you know, because like that was one of the matches that like I, because I love Jay so much. Like I couldn't watch it for a while because it was that brutal, and I was just sitting there cringing. I can only imagine how you felt in the garden when everyone was cheering for Okada, and you were you were oh, the main big was, Jay White. Fan. It was. It was like, it was like being a Trump supporter at an Obama rally. It was oh, like, it, that, that's how it was. It was like, it was like, 
like I'm sitting here and everybody's just booing him and like they're saying like like some people were saying like fuck you switchblade and I was like oh my god no he no he got no. booed out of the building completely he had legitimate yeah. heel and he carried that to a team yeah and then when he lost the title like my friend Melissa was was like a cup a section back from me and like I just went and ran to her I ran to her and I and she just said. And she just started hugging me because she knew. Like every, like I told everybody leading up to it, I was like, "He loses that title in the garden, I'm gonna cry." He'll and get like, it back one day. The switch will be back on top. Soon. Yeah, he will. He will. And and it was funny. I was like, I keep saying it on Twitter. I'm like, Jay still has to avenge the fact that I cried in a New York City taxi cab on the way back to my hotel in New Jersey. <laughs> After that, well, he's, maybe, he's maybe still gotta avenge that, that shit. Road. Maybe he'll start that road with another promo at the venue. You saw the promo he had with. But first, he's got to fight the ace again. Yeah. Oh. One more time. And then there's one more thing I got to ask. Uh, how would you all feel? Rivals, Tana and, o and Jay, they're destined to do this forever. Yeah. I, and then I was thinking to myself, okay, imagine if they do it. They have Chris Jericho beat Okada and they do Jay White versus, oh, versus piss, Jericho. Man. That would piss that side of New Japan Twitter off. With, they only like oh, the Japanese the, wrestlers. Oh, the hate. The puro, the puro side of Japanese of New Japan fandom would they'd stop go, watching. They would, they would absolutely their lose their, they would lose their shit. That's kind of why I want to see it happen, just for just just to read the reaction. And the puro side. and also, I thought about it. Like I got really pissed off, like when Jericho got announced for that IWGP Heavyweight Title match. You thought because, it was gonna be Switchblade? Because no, because it was supposed to be Jay. Because the whole the whole premise of that Goto feud was. Whoever wins this m match between Goto and Jay, they're next in line for an IWGP heavyweight championship shot. That was wow. the whole principle of that feud. And Jay is all is all saying like, you know, like I'm gonna, I'm next in line, I'm next in line. And then you have just Jericho just coming and usurp it and just, you know, like he he automatically gets a title just because he's Chris Jericho, and that pissed me off like bad. Like I was pissed off for a week. But then, he, here's the thing he, about he, this: he gave another punch to challenge Okada. I guess you could say that. But here's yeah, the thing: I think I think because this because they're not WWE, um, they might actually incorporate the whole. Hey, I actually earned my shot at Okada. You walked in because they you're Chris go Jericho. Back to Jay versus Okada so soon, which I understand after they just did it at Madison yeah. Square Garden. So I I thought about it. match over and over again. Otherwise, you're becoming WWE. This is one of the strange new Japan pro wrestling. And I and I thought about it, and I was like, huh. Well, maybe if Jay took the title off Jericho, that would be better because Jericho is kind of a he's a goat. I see that feud happening before Jericho leaves. That's definitely Absolutely. gonna happen. Because you've got you've got kind of borderline psychopathic switchblade Jay White, and then you've got just crazy as hell. Chris Jericho, like those I would have said, Clockwork Orange style Jericho. What? Clockwork Orange style Jericho. Speaking of Jericho, Double or Nothing is going to be big to see if he can still go in like big singles matches that don't involve a no DQ against like yeah, Kenny Omega. Standard match: Kenny Omega versus Chris Jericho. So hey, let's just go for it. I I think he'll deliver, but I'm curious to see it. Yeah, me too, because he's had some. It's going to play out. Yeah, because he's had to modify his style a lot. He's had to go more brawling based. He's had to yeah. go that direction because he is older. You know, I'm interested to see how he's going to perform against, you know, Omega as well. Didn't Chris Jericho say he can't take the one wing angel? Yeah. Like yeah, he said that. He said he can't do that anymore. Jericho's def I have Jericho winning at double or nothing, so that shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, because Kenny Omega already beat Chris Jericho at Wrestle Kingdom under a no disqualification match. So I feel like I don't want to call it 50-50 booking because it's a totally different company and storyline. It's line. not. They haven't done the match. It, it's been a, It's been like a, over a year since they yeah, last wrestled. It's a totally different type build and story to it, okay? So I feel like Chris Jericho's going to go over here. Somewhere. Probably yeah, in fact, I think I kept hearing that it might be featuring the inaugural world title. I don't know if, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. Because I see, Jer I don't, I don't think Jericho's gonna be wrestling every AEW show. Well, the thing that AEW is not gonna be on, like you know, every week with these specials and stuff like that. I, I think it's Jericho more likely someone like Hangman, or I think it's gonna be maybe Hangman versus Pac. 
Yeah, I think I, I, I think the idea, and this is just me guessing, that they might actually give Jericho the title just for like about until their next event, which is in Florida, to honor to help support the whole shooting stuff happening. Yeah, fight for the fallen. Yeah, I think that's that like the stadium. The Jaguar Stadium. Yeah, I was I was gonna say like maybe they're gonna try and have Jericho run with the AEW bell until a, Fight for the Fallen. Title change for their first Jacksonville show. Yeah, and the uh, other idea is that they want to promote the title, so they're gonna have New Japan work with them to do it because you know Jericho being a double champ again would be kind of fun. J- champ versus champ. Oh, co- would Jer- would Jericho bring the belt to Dominion? That'd be insane. I think I he would be allowed to. to. It wouldn't be title for title, though. That'd make it even more epic. Yeah. Because they don't have the partnership with New Japan yet. I think this is a test run for for New Japan and AEW. It's obviously going to go well. I see it going successful. Yeah. They all want Kenny Omega for New Japan, so there's that. So I could definitely see AEW building a partnership with New Japan for wrestling. I mean, even though he's signed with AEW, I read a rumor Jericho signed on for a lot more dates with New Japan. Nice. So let's go ahead and talk about the women of AEW. So we got that triple threat between Britt Baker, Nyla Rose, and Kylie Ray. And Speaking the of women of AEW, I read something interesting about them. What? Do so you know how Bea Prisley signed with them? Yes. Well, she was going to wrestle Tony Storm at a stardom event, but that match got pulled because Vince didn't want one of oh, his yeah. WWE got girls to lose to an AEW girl, obviously. I mean... Penny! Just <laughs> that makes sense. That I was like, that's totally a Vince move. Yeah, but they couldn't figure out an angle where both don't lose and are protected like they did in Rev Pro with Pac and Will Ospreay. They couldn't do that. Are we going to get that rematch still now that Pac is signed? Or actually, we will. They'll be allowed to wrestle for other companies. We're going to have to at this point. So, Courtney, what are your thoughts on the women of AEW? Who do you see winning that triple threat? Um, I really want Britt Baker to win it. I hope it's Britt Baker. Because she. She is just phenomenally talented. She's incredibly driven outside of the ring. I mean, the girl put herself through freaking dental school while still wrestling. Yeah. I mean, she is just an all-around great girl. She's great to the fans online. She's, you know, like, she's one of those that she's, she's truly earned cult. it. Fat ass. Yes, she is. She yeah, and I... Yeah, I loved... Um, at all in when she came out to Adam's old theme music. Like I was like I was like, oh my gosh, the Adam Cole baby from Ring of Honor Bobs I'm getting right now. Hopefully give her a new theme though, because I don't want her to just be seen as Adam Cole's wife. Well if you look at the Road to Double or Nothing, you've seen the music production team to an extent. She's getting a new theme theme for her. So yes, she will have a new theme. I wonder what Gold Dust theme is gonna be. That has me interested because he's not gonna be allowed to use his WWE theme. Okay, we got to talk about that yeah. So we gotta talk about that match. Cody versus Dustin Rose. First off, those promos. Freaking incredible. I think this Dustin's match, actually gonna win at double or nothing. This match has a candidate to be one of the best matches of the night. Not just for the in-ring action, but the moment that we might see afterwards. It's not gonna be about the in-ring action. It'll be more about the storytelling and the... Yeah, generation versus generation. So, Eric, I'll ask you first. Who do you see winning, Cody or Dustin? Uh, I see Cody winning because, let's be honest, this is going to be like a passing of the torch moment and they're going to have this emotional embrace. Cody wins, people were saying, oh, he's abusing his power, booking himself to win matches already. Except uh, Dustin Dustin Rhodes has nothing to gain from winning. Except, and Tony Khan's technically the head of creative. He's the one who's running it. He says every final decision goes through him. True. Courtney, your thoughts. Um, this is a match I could see either guy winning, but if we're really talking about, like, they're making AEW, like, this anti-WWE thing, and they're talking about, like, you know, we want to kill the Attitude Era, the Attitude Era, Yeah. you know, if Cody did go over, you know, like, it could be a moment where, you know, we're saying, we're starting a new, we're, we're leaving that in the past. And this is a new endeavor. This is a new company, an alternative to what you've seen before. Like, I could really see that be the moment that they have. And maybe post-match, you know, like, there's a brotherly embrace. And, like, you know, Dustin wishes, you know, AW and Cody well. I could so totally see that happening. It just depends on where they're going with this. If they're going 
more along the lines of we're going to make this brother versus brother feud a thing in AEW. What are we going to do with this? You know, is this a one-off? What is this? It, that's all, that's all really, you know, what, what hinges, what the results of that match hinges upon. Is this, well, is this going to be a feud or is this going to be just one match and done? Well, we already know that the next thing that got that fighter show, I think, and then fight for the fallen. And Cody right now has a match set up with Darby Allen at uh, Fighter, I believe. I don't think he has a match set up for Fight for the Fallen. Oh, by the way, I cannot wait to see Ali versus Brandy Rose at Fight for the Fallen. So, I feel like this has to be a one-off. I think Ali's winning that one. I want Ali to win that. Anyway, uh, I I think Kenny Omega's got a match announced as well. Yeah, I guess that guy from OV... Oh, from I've heard those guys can do some crazy things, so I'm excited to see them in there with SCU. Yeah, oh, yeah I've looked at some of their action. That's this that's my actually... sleeper pick to steal the show. Most people aren't yeah. talking about. It. I think that match is actually gonna be great. Those that's those much... the guys from China, right? Yeah, yeah those so guys have can do some crazy things. I've yeah. seen like, highlights on YouTube and yeah, on me Twitter. too. They are amazing. They like. They've got the Cirque du Soleil with the depth of flying, high flying type vibe with, with you know the strong style there too. They got like those they... three professionals, Daniels, Kazarian, and Sky to keep to like That's carry more of like technical, obviously. Yeah, that those guys, like I love SCU. One of a kind. So who do you think SCU. I think SCU is gonna win. I think SCU is gonna win it. And I think but that the this OWE was, guys will come out looking better in defeat than they yeah. did going in. Well, exactly. Okay, this, is their, this is their first match as part of their partnership, so yeah, you don't want they're, they're not an established team. You don't want them beating SCU right out of the gate. No, 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 no. And I then, think so. and then you use this match as a launching pad for those guys. You and they get the, and then they get the handshake after the match with SCU. I, yeah, I have a lot of respect and handshake after a lot of these matches. I honestly wish the AEW got Chelsea Green and Chelsea Blanchard, but that's just me. Yeah, it would have been fun. Um, Chelsea Green was freaking hilarious at all. I love her character. Me too. Uh, I feel yes. bad for her. She broke her wrist in her NXT debut on yeah, TV. Hey, she got she got to marry Zack Ryder, so good on them. Yeah, and, and uh, also... Um, also, I kept hearing a whole bunch of people going ahead and complaining about Sonny Kiss. Oh, God. Here we well, go. Of course. Are they complaining about Nyla Rose? Because she's the, a transgender? That Pretty much. Be... Oh, my be... God. I knew people were going to have a problem with that. The minute I saw them, I'm like, oh, God. Really? We're really going to talk. We're really going to criticize this. This is the pet peeve y'all going to go with. Give me a break. Like, my thing is, is you know, like, Sonny Kiss is talented like i watched him in um lucha yeah. underground he can be like a was, velveteen dream type character yeah he really yeah, can be. be he really can be and you know like nala rose i'm not familiar with her work but you know like uh, I've I, just, seen, I think she's like one of those she's a samoan monster that can actually wrestle without botching let's just say that unlike yeah. someone else that we all know in WWE. who's uh, injured right now two torn acls Oh, uh, all right. I don't like her as a performer, but that's just like. Look, let's just say this: we 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 have our disagreements on certain wrestlers, superstars. Like I hope she comes back off, stronger. We don't wish any bad ill will as far as their health to them. So not this is why I hate when people say, "Ooh, now you like them because they're hurt." No, like no, when Roman got like cancer, that. and we were all sending him our well wishes. Uh, here's the difference with that. Uh, no, we don't like the Roman wrestling character. We like Joe. We like Joe and Hawaii. Person versus character. There's more of these people than what you just see in the ring. You want the biggest example of that? Go look at Mark Calloway's interview outside WWE when he was being himself. I, I watched when he was talking about like the wrestlers nowadays and what's missing. Yeah, and it's and he wasn't wrong, but anyway, uh, sorry. He's not wrong at all. You, you were saying about Sonny Kiss and Nyla Rose? Like, I, I do, like, I'm not, like, I, I like the fact that they signed Nala Rose. My only concern is, is I have one concern, is, okay. is like, I, I don't know if she knows her own strength, and that's the problem that Nia Jax kind of ran into with the whole Becky Lynch 
injury that happened is that like you don't know your own strength and sometimes you will hit harder than you intend to and that's my only concern with her like this this is just it has nothing to do with the fact that she's transgender at all it's just the fact that she is so much bigger than the other girls in the ring and I just have that concern that you know that she just doesn't know her own strength which hopefully and it might make the match a little sloppy yeah and hope you're looking at in ring work versus actual personality and life choices so you're a normal human being yeah like that like that's my that's my only concern and you know like i hope that they're working with her on that i hope that maybe they're training together they have like her and brit and you know those girls and they're working together and that they're putting this match together to where it's going to go go off without a hitch where wwe really doesn't do that much i I don't i don't hear much about you know the girls getting together if they have a match and you know yeah i think that only happens in nxt because they're actually developing these people but vince is rushing them to to market do it with ronda i think for matches yeah, they did it with Ronda Rousey, except for the Charlotte Flair match she had at Survivor Series. They had no time to prepare for that, apparently. That wasn't rehearsed at all, which makes and it even yeah, more really, impressive. That's what that proved, was one of the best matches of that night, actually. That's what proved to all of us Ronda is actual talent. It's not just over. Matches are getting rehearsed, and she's benefiting from it. Yeah. I don't get the hate for her. She's elevated the division. She did very, very well. On the microphone, however. Not so much. At least there's a reason why she's not as good as the microphone because of her speech impediment. Yeah, and of course Vince doesn't care about that. That's why I didn't hold it against Ronda Rousey when her promo seemed weak because he did have that speech impediment. Courtney, I'm sure you were aware of that. Um, she had a she has a speech impediment. Like I was not aware of that. Yeah, remember how she talks and all of a sudden her voice starts to break down and it seems like she's struggling to keep it together. Or rush her words. Yeah, um... Yeah, it turns out she grew up with the speech impairment all her life. Yeah, like, so that's that's her one weakness in her promos, is that she always sounds like she's on the verge of crying, you know? Like, while she's supposed to be out here about to right. kick some ass, you know? Like, that's the one weakness that she has. And I even said that this may be a wild and crazy idea, and they've already put her with Kyrie and Asuka... But I would have put maybe Paige. Paige is a bit as, weird, though. I mean, she is a bit weird, and it is a weird fit. But you know, like Paige, like even Paul Heyman would be great for a mouthpiece for Rhonda. You know, like make Paige and Paul Heyman. I think Paul. I read Paul Heyman said Paige can be the next be the female Paul Heyman. Now that's quite an accolade, but I don't know if she can really pull that off. She's good, but I don't see her being that good. Yeah, about to say. Uh, hey guys, I think I figured out. I uh, I looked up more about Ronda Rousey's speech issue. She has the disorder. She has. Yeah, I fa- They they think they know what Ronda explains. She knows. She thinks she knows what might have caused it. What? Okay. Um. Are you sure you want me to say this, especially on here, because it might get weird and disturbing. All right. All right. I'll, I'll just look. I'm like, I, I'm tempted to say it because the idea of it is kind of shocking. Listen, it's not like we got, like, let's be honest here. It's not like we got thousands of people watching. Just say it. <laughs> okay. When she was born, her umbilical cord wrapped around her neck. What? Yes. Oh, I was about to say it was, pro- I was thinking it, would be, it was something with her, you know. Larynx? Like one of her oh, private... Like- one of her private parts is what I'm trying to say. Nah, it was the umbilical cord when she was born wrapped around her neck. Oh my word. Oh god. Yeah. That's uh, news to me. Yeah, she and she did this me. interview a while back on the Rolling Stone in May. That's a problem a lot of this women have, though. They look like they're... Oh wait, she actually made this interview back in 2015. Yeah, she thinks this is what caused it. Oh, okay. Yeah, apparently, um, it, I, I can't pronounce it, so it's, um, uh, she apparently had a prexia condition. Huh. I'm pretty sure I pronounced it wrong because, yeah, and. Gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, let's go back to talking about women. So I recently read an interview Jordan Grace gave 
about women's wrestling and how she feel like Impact Wrestling has the strongest roster because they're not just focused on the title, they're not focused on just a certain look, and they're using all these women in multiple storylines. When you think about Impact Wrestling, they got like three different storylines. So she feels like Impact Wrestling is the strongest women's division going today. Who do you guys think has the strongest women's division going today? NXT, Impact Wrestling, or Ring of Honor? Okay, that's a tough one. Like I'd say Impact right now. Yeah, especially since you have all these these absurd storylines. Like they did a whole murder angle to get one of their wrestlers off because they were going off to AEW. That was beautiful, though. I loved that. That was brilliant. I cried. I did too. <laughs> I was and like, Rosemary and, Allie, and Rosemary and Allie both liked my tweet about that entire angle. Give me next money. Yeah, I, I like I I've had Kyrie saying like two of my tweets when I said that she's gonna be a a, few, a big star. Oh yeah. So Eric, you said that was tough, but uh, put you on the spot. What do you think? Okay, so let's see. You have the NXT division. You have Impact doing the absurdity and just embracing the madness of everything. Then you got NXT providing all these crazy storylines. But then you have to contend with Ring of Honor and its pure wrestling style. Let's see. I would probably pick Impact. All right, we got two Impacts. Courtney, what about you? I've got to go solely based on roster strength. Um, I would have to go with Impact because those girls can legitimately get in there and they can tear it up and they can, um, and they're presented as good characters. Um, Yeah. Jordan Grace and, even said, and, like, okay, so you're out of the title picture. Well, guess what? You're not just going to sit on the sidelines. Something else might develop for you. There really isn't a woman wasted in impact. Oh, um, guys. What? Speaking of AEW, we forgot to touch okay, on something with me? their TV deal. Uh, what do you all think of the rumor that they're paying TNT for TV time? Oh, yeah, I've heard about that. I was like, eh, I don't know how to feel about that. Like, they can't afford it because the Khan family. Khan! <laughs> I don't know how true it is. Do you think there's any truth to it? Um, I, I would probably believe it for one reason, if they ever had to go overtime. And because, you know, they're, they're, they're a new company starting up, so... I don't know if a company like them would put their full trust, but I mean, I mean the guy who runs it is a billionaire, obviously, and, and the owner of the Jacksonville Jaguars team. And his father even and TNT up has a lot of sports plan. on their network, so yeah. Well, think about All In and how they had the money scrub in the Kasuska Okada match go like an extra fifteen minutes. Yet they still ended right on time with an incredible fast. Yeah, they, yeah, that match was so rushed. You could hear them talking about how oh we got to go home, we got to go. Yeah, I know, but yet they still delivered. I love that match. The only the thing is they did that whole post-match point. promo with all the elite that, that would have made the show if they just had, like, the time cut. Oh, absolutely, but at least we got to see it on YouTube later on. Yeah, I'm being so, the elite. Yeah, too sweet. So, tag match, we got to talk about Young Bucks, Pentagon Jr. versus uh, versus Pentagon Jr. Ray Phoenix, AAA tag title. So, this is really the only title match on this show, legitimately, that we know of. And it's also likely the most predictable outcome. I really feel like it is, too. It's triple A, people. It's got to be Pentagon Jr. and Bray Phoenix. Hi, Courtney. I think she had to go do something. I don't know what's happened. All right, so continuing. And so, uh, triple A tag titles. Pentagon Jr., Bray Phoenix, I feel like that has to be a must win for them. They just lost the Impact Tag Team Championship at, at Impact Rebellion to LAX. LAX is going to carry the Impact Tag Division into the future. Whether they face the Norm, whether they face the Rascal, or whether they face, uh, crap, what's the other tag team there? That's Carlos with Joe and Final Ball. I don't see that happening. <laughs> but, um, I'm going with Pentagon Jr. and Ray Phoenix in that one. Jake, what about you? Obviously, Pentagon and Phoenix are more prominent in AA, so they're definitely winning. Okay, I just yeah. got an update from Courtney. She said her phone forced an update on her. She'll be back. She'll. She's waiting for her, waiting to add herself back as soon as her phone restarts. So we'll see her later. Okay, no good deal. All right, so let's go back and finish predicting Money in the Bank because uh, you know we still have freaking ten matches. So I, I think it's obvious to say Seth Rollins is going to retain the title here. They're not going to like hop into the Universal title this soon, especially 
um, if they're going to the freaking Jedi show. Do you guys see Seth Rollins retaining? I see a possible screw job finish. With who? With the Styles and Rollins match. Oh, uh, okay. Like, 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 I don't be surprised if they don't do the Nakamura and Styles ending. Oh, you mean the double low blow? Yeah. And then we're going to rebuild on another pointless match and then a closing match again. So this is going to be a three match feud basically in SummerSlam. Considering and, we got the freaking uh, Extreme Rules and then the next three rounds of that is SummerSlam. So, oh, no, wait, no, I took that back. I'm sorry. The Saudi Arabia show. I was like, why can't you call it, like, I know Backlash is now damaged goods because of what happened last time, but why not just call it what you were going to call what Great Balls of Fire became, uh, Bad Blood? God. I'm so glad they got rid of that. The memes from that freaking, uh, logo, horrendous. That was, memes were hope, the memes were funny, I'll say that. Yeah. But, like, yeah, I was like, just call it bad blood. Like, I know. Why not call it bad blood? In fact, it would actually make sense. It, like, imagine if they brought back Tomasa Ciampa and Johnny Gargano's feud. That would be the perfect arena to have it at. The perfect yeah. pay-per-view event to have it at. In the Hell in a Spell match in the main event? Yes. Yes. That'd be the perfect. Name fits the freaking build. If a pay-per-view actually fits the name of your build, maybe more people will be invested in it. Oh, look, it's freaking uh, Money in the Bank. What's the only thing that matters here? The ladder match. Now, are you going to give me two legitimate Money in the Bank title briefcase holders that I believe, A, can cash in successfully, and B, become successful stars afterwards? Because what happened last year? You had Alexa Bliss and Braun Strowman. Look at what happened. Alexa Bliss is doing talk shows now and rarely wrestles, and Braun Strowman is... And if WWE if repeats it again this year with a, with a big man and a blonde, it's going to be Mandy and Baron Corbin. That's oh, what I'm God, saying. no. Please, no. And the money in the bank will be wasted for another year. Hooray. That, that's slowly killing another gimmick. Hey, Courtney's back. Hey, Courtney. I think she's trying to get her microphone ready. Um, hold on. But uh, also, one more thing I wanted to bring up. Um, Carmella went back to being a blonde. Oh, yeah, that. Why? Probably because she knows the game and she has to play it. It's all about controlling how you take it. Who are we talking about? Carmella going back to being a blonde. No more dance breaks. Speaking of speaking of her, I saw a post. Do you consider her like a two-time Money in the Bank winner or one time? One. What happened with Ellsworth? Oh, you had to bring that name up. One time. Oh no, not yet. I mean, I kind of did earlier when I talked about Eric. Yeah, but this is at... different because Ellsworth kind of threw off the freaking women's evolution that was supposed to be happening in WWE, ruining the first ever women's Money in the Bank ladder match. And even though they redid it on SmackDown, you still got the same result. It was all pointless. Yeah. Why did they even do it again? Was there a reason? Because James Ellsworth is a guy, and, well, they say he is a guy, but they mostly say he's probably a different species. And the new, and Daniel Bryan, what, 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 Courtney? <laughs> uh, guys, I can't hear Courtney now. What? Yeah, I don't hear Courtney. Okay, so we got a bunch of veterans. We got a lot of new people now. I love this partnership, by the way, with CMLL, uh, New Japan Pro Wrestling, and uh, Ring of Honor. Courtney, who do you see winning Block A and Block B and taking it overall? I can read them off to you if you want. I'm still figuring out my bracket. I'm like, oh, this is tough, actually. Did you did you guys hear the news about the tournament though about Flip Gordon having to withdraw sadly because of a visa issue? Oh, yeah. that's I was looking forward to it. Same thing with Desperado, but he got hurt apparently, which is the yeah, reason. Yeah, Desperado's injured, so now you got Dolph and Narita. Go ahead, Courtney. Let's okay. go over it. Yeah. Yeah, and, he, and, he, 
in, in the A block, you have Tiger Mask, Sho, Dragon Lee, uh, Titan, Marty Scroll, Jonathan Gresham, Hajiya Shimori, uh, Yoshinobu Kenyumaru, apologies if I'm butchering any name, uh, Taka Mishinoku, and the Dragon, undefeated in singles action, I might add, Shingo Takagi. Um, guys? Yeah? They're still using the wild card rule. Of course. They say, they say Charlotte's going to be on Raw for a double contract sign. Yeah, I just heard team. that. Roman's going to be on Miz TV. All and right, they're doing Braun versus Drew, which hopefully Drew that's does not it. get pin clean. That's the Super Juniors. They're going on now. These shows are four hours. I am not watching Monday Night Raw. Screw yeah, it's this. It's taped anyways. I'll just look at the spoilers because they're on the European tour. Yeah, just go read them somewhere on freaking Fightful or Wrestling. Wait, so they have or... to come back from this European tour, and then a few days later they have to wrestle in oh, a yeah, ladder match. Right. They're in Europe, so the shows are going to matter even less. And then they have to come back and do a ladder match when they get back. Yeah, so according to you, you about to say something? Oh, yeah. I think Osprey's winning the B block. Oh, you think well, Osprey's winning the B block? Yep. Well, yeah, and in my opinion, I think Dragon Lee's gonna get the uh, get the A block. Well, he is, wait, isn't Dragon Lee the current IWGP? Yeah. Which you're... Listen, here's my theory. I think Dragon Lee's gonna win the tournament. He's gonna he's gonna say, "I want to fight Hiromu at Dominion." What? That'll be his big return. Whoa! Just think about it. If the champion wins, he gets to choose who he wants to fight at Dominion. Well, it would be fitting considering he faced him in last year's uh, finals, and he was injured because of that match. And, and then Hiromu gets his title back. Hooray! He does want to face Hiromu again, so that would be fitting. But I don't know, guys. Shingo, Shingo Takagi, he's undefeated in singles action, and I feel like he and Shaw are going to have the best match of the A block. I really feel like Takagi is going to take the A block. Takagi versus Show is going to be awesome with how they've been Absolutely. building to it on the tours. And also, yeah. Bandito's in, in Block B, which will be fun. Oh, yeah, Bandito freaking. Bandito will be great, but because he's with Ring of Honor, he's probably not going to win. Yeah, but oh, here's the thing at least All In did one thing for him was that make him a star. That people, people... thought he was Neville. Yeah, I was like, why was that a thing? Like, they, they kept saying it was because, it's because of the ears. The ears, man. That's cool, the ears. Look at that predator in the ring. Yeah, I don't get that whole Bandito is Pac thing. Like, I was like, okay, that doesn't make any sense because, one, Pac would have shown his face and, like, did some shocking moment. I'm excited well, for Jonathan Gresham. The guy's super over underrated. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm excited about Jonathan Gresham though. He's gonna he's yeah. really underrated. I think this tour will be a great platform for him to shine, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, as a great map based uh technician, and I recently saw his match against Silas Young where Silas won using a freaking hammer behind the ref's back, the bell hammer. I'm very far in this. I'm excited for him versus Marty in Marty. night one. I believe that's the match. Of, what do you guys think of the newest member of Bullet Club, El Phantasmo? I like what I'm seeing. Right. This was one of my first times seeing him, but I had heard about him and I heard great things, and he definitely lived up to the hype in his Just debut. Watch the Wrestling Jake. You'll know more about him, but go ahead, Courtney. Oh, 
Oh, yes, Phantasmo vs. Osprey is going to be awesome. And they're both in the same block. It's going to happen. Yes. A little teaser. Yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure we're going to probably get a bunch of five-star matches from, from Dave Meltzer on the Best of Super Juniors. Because As we New should. Pro Wrestling constantly gives us five-star matches. Did you not see Tomo Hero Ichi versus Evil? We know. I wouldn't give that five stars, but that was such a that was so hard hitting. Like, god How damn. How the hell is either of those men standing? <laughs> At least, my lord, that was insanity. Oh, by the way, you talk about the whole you talk about the whole new look with show and black hair. Uh, Courtney, I just want to say this: Sonata shaved his beard, and I must say, I'm glad he did that. He lost to Okada. Just saying. Yeah, those were crazy. T those are crazy times. Oh, <laughs> uh, also, um, you know how I kept calling the whole rise of the aid of AEW and all these other promotions. I keep calling it now the alternative era. I like that because that's really what it is. I mean, it's a rise in wrestling. There's more now than just WWE. People can actually just see WWE, but they're not actually looking for it. Because it's not freaking interesting. You want to know what's interesting? Look at Ring of Honor. Look at New Japan. Look at Rise. Look at Stardom. Look at Impact. Look at AEW. Give it a chance, by the way. And look at your local independent wrestling. I just went to a freaking independent wrestling show last night, Extreme Chaos Wrestling, and it basically was like watching ECW from the 1990s. Freaking epic. Now imagine John Moxley showed up there. What would you have done? I would have lost my shit. <laughs> yeah, I bet a lot of people would have loved to have seen that. But like, but now like, and then you got, and, and then you got, and now you got all these other guys, these very big names in WWE say, "I want out because I'm not happy here," and go somewhere else and pop that place and make it big. We define themselves, find that magic, express individuality. These are all the things people long for that WWE is denying. You know, like Shinsuke Nakamura, like, he's basically out. He's done. Yeah, he doesn't care anymore. He might just like, not wrestle, wrestle anymore. anymore. He might just surf for the rest of his life. Yeah, that might be the only reason why he stays in the freaking U.S. under WWE. Because he may not want to move his family back. Hey, he could go to the U.S. somewhere where he can work less dates... And yeah. it can revive his passion for wrestling called AEW, which has which will give him money as well. I was literally watching Shinsuke Nakamura versus Sami Zayn, NXT TakeOver Dallas. I'm binging through the NXT TakeOver as Game Ready for NXT TakeOver 25. I'm like, oh my gosh, that was such an incredible I'm going to go back and watch some of Nakamura's past New Japan matches to remember a time where he was the king of strong style because I miss those days. Oh, you mean like when he faced uh, uh, the ace in the freaking main event and he was only IGGP Intercontinental Champion? That and the match yeah, with Kota Ibushi at Wrestle Kingdom 9. Yes, exactly! And, and then you gotta remember this thing. The most annoying thing about Shinsuke Nakamura's WWE run is be... Okay, that match, Sami Zayn and Nakamura, there's a photographic evidence of Vince watching that match backstage. Actually, there is? Yeah. Vince actually watched an NXT match? Yeah, he was... Uh, Triple H was the one that posted it, I think. He showed Vince watching it as well, and look where Nakamura is, even though he saw that match. Hey, you remember when the fans of NXT UK said, look at this, Vince, and then Vince was like, I like it. Do you really think Vince sent out that tweet? No. Asked, are you watching Vince? Yeah, are you watching Vince? <laughs> are you watching Vince McMahon? Are you uh, watching brilliant. Vince... NXT TakeOver UK, the very first, was freaking incredible. I can't wait for the second. But uh, as far as my winners, uh, according to finish what I'm going to say with you, I'm calling it now. Will Ospreay versus Shingo Takagi in the finals. Shingo Takagi wins the whole thing. I'm sticking with my theory of Dragon Lee winning, and I don't know who he'll face in the finals. B-Block's a lot more unpredictable. It really is. 
Oh, also, I didn't have a theory about the G1 Climax. What? Oh, what about the G1 Climax? Um, I keep having this feeling that, that Will Ospreay's gonna win it. Why? Because he's getting pushed in that heavyweight division, and, well, because they because he's a very popular... I think it's the Naito's winning the G1. I... Huh, Noah? Zack Sabre Jr. has done that yet. They could, they could tout him as that. They could put it on his resume. Uh, yeah, but that's a little, that's a little overkill. Eric, I love your premonition, but uh, G1 Climax, Will Ospreay, uh, I don't know. Yeah, probably. Like, like I said, that would just be wishful thinking. It's Naito, Jay White, and Kota, K- K- Kota Bushi. Yeah, Kota Bushi would be like my primary fix. Yep. Also, I did enjoy Tetsuya Naito versus Kota Bushi. From G1 oh my Supercharged. God, that was yeah. <laughs> they're about to have another match at Dominion. G1 It'll be their match at Dominion as good as those were. I got a feeling their Dominion match is going to be even better. Agreed. And Psycho Monster. Who do you think wins? Does the Bushi beat Naito again, or does Naito get his title back? Uh, I'm Naito pretty sure. Sh- be the first man to hold both either GP Intercontinental and either GP. But I want at the same time. I want a Bushi to have a longer reign, so I hope he retains. I do too. So Bushi's my pick to retain. Courtney. Neither did I. I thought he was going to be a freelancer for life yeah. and would never hold a title in New Japan. Yep. I honestly thought Cody Bushi was going to join up with Kenny. Was wrestling for another company not named WWE in the United States. Even Tana's been getting in his promos, and with that, this elbow injury is just speeding up that process, I feel. Yeah. He was not 100%. And he still put on a really good match with Zack Sabre Jr. Well, the New Temple Wrestling matches stole the night of G1 Supercard, just saying. Yeah, like, I keep thinking, like, Ring of Honor needs New Japan more than New Japan needs them. I think that's a safe bet. I'm not really a big Ring of Honor guy right now. I'm not really a big fan of what they're putting out, in all honesty. Well, there's a few super st- there's a few wrestlers I do enjoy watching. I do enjoy watching uh, Bill and Enterprise especially now. Kelly I was confused at why Jeff Cobb dropped the title. Um, that, that confused I me a little. I can't believe that happened. I, I was like, Shane Taylor? Wow. Everybody was shocked by that. I sure as hell didn't call that one right. This I was going to set up a one-on-one match. I feel. Oh wait, is he supposed to face uh, Taiji again at some point? Oh, that's right. Taiji took the title from him. Taiji's facing. Taiji's uh, fighting Ishii. Oh, and he says he wants to. Are which, you crazy, man? Got death wish. Which I don't know what they're going to do. They might want to have Taiji get a few successful title runs, but I don't want Ish. I want Ishii to get a title run. Damn it! Well, it's been too long. Taiji had that glove. You know he has that glove. He hasn't used it yet. Is this the time he's finally going to use it? What's in the bag? What's in the bag? That's the thing. I don't see Taiji losing the title. Is it Iska's oh. Iron Claw? Yeah. That was a good. That was a fun retirement match. I love that. It was. That's how you do a retirement to... match for a guy who's like a, more of like a mid carder, like Iska. Yeah, talk about equal respect. Uh, speaking of which, let's talk about retirements that might be coming up. What are your guys' thoughts on Sheamus? Apparently, he might be leaving WWE ring altogether soon. Yeah, I, I was that character and interesting. I've always been a fan of him as an in ring performer, so it'll be sad to see him go. 
Yeah, I was like, I'm amazed he actually managed to keep going when the reports started coming out about it. I mean, he's, he's suffering, what, a similar injury that permanently put Edge on the shelf, right? Yeah. Huh. Courtney, your thoughts? So have I. my top priority with anybody whether i dislike them i like them they're heel they're face i boo i cheer i watch i enjoy i use respect unless you're wearing corbin i just wish you the best on your health simple as that so with that corny what was one of your favorite sheamus matches Was that Survivor Series 2015? I think she means WrestleMania 28. 18 seconds! The kiss of death! <laughs> my, my jaw, my jaw was on the floor. I'm like, you lost the title in 18 seconds! Oh, jeez. Yeah, actually, I liked his match against Triple H back then. That was when the rise of Daniel Bryan started in terms of his popularity. Yeah, and then he became a no guy. And AJ Lee became. And now he's he's an eco. He's gonna make hemp tag titles. I actually look forward to that. It'd be refreshing because I don't know about y'all. I'm sick to death of the damn dimes. So am I. It'll it'll act and it fits with their character. So who do you think should be the first realistic? Title defense opponent, and do you see these guys? I think it'll be heavy machinery. Elevating the elevating the Smackdown tag titles to the main event picture. It's hard to say who would really be the contenders for them because really, th- th- there's not a lot of good, not a lot of tag teams on Smackdown. That's mainly why they put Brian and Rowan together because they needed tag teams. Yeah, oh, and I was just and all I, I was rules. thinking. And I was just thinking, like, why didn't they just move the revival to SmackDown? Thank you. Yeah, you move the Usos to Raw, you don't move the revival to SmackDown. Who wins in the end there? And the Usos are, look what they're doing on Raw now. Well, thank God we saw them on SmackDown Live for what they're known for, tag team wrestling. I'm just Amen. Saying. Like I said, I look at wrestling for wrestling. Don't give me eye candy. Don't give me stupid potty humor, don't give me attractiveness or just like a showpiece, give me fucking wrestling. Apologies for the language. But damn it, I like wrestling. I don't blame you. So that's all I have to say about that, pretty much. All right, well, Rear of Honor, speaking of wrestling, uh, Rear of Honor, War of the Worlds, Grand Rapids, Michigan is about to start. So I'm about to get ready for that. So is there anything else anybody wants to talk about? Or are we good? I think we're good. Um, does it? Yeah, we're good. How long do we go for? Uh, I don't know. I'll have to check after the recording's oh, done. Well, the bottom line is this. 2019 is the evolution of wrestling. And there is so much good wrestling out there. And we can only pray WWE gets better from all of this. But that's not going to happen until the day Vince no longer exists. And at least well, we have the, Triple H actually... We'll not the keys of the, of the fucking company. And at least we know Triple H is on the fan side. Like, yeah, my dad, my father-in-law is insane. Thank God. You've seen the light and you realize it. Now let's join together and take down this tyrant. What? I'm not wrong, am I? (laughs) No, you're not. 
Also, does anyone know? Uh, uh, but also, um, let's see. So, yeah, that's pretty much it for me on that part. But like, yeah, I, I, I imagine if Triple H and he brings his NXT crew to Raw one night. All of them are at the arena, and then you have all of Vince's guys in the ring, and then Triple H decides to do what Captain America did in Endgame. Here we go. Uh, Triple H, you know, he grabs his sledgehammer, he's with his fellow NXT co-brethren, and, and he just says, NXT! Assemble. NXT! <laughs> Not developmental. It's another brand. Realize it. I don't think Vince will ever accept that idea. And this is why he needs to step down and fade away into obscurity and become obsolete. Absolutely. By the way, I hope Jeff Hardy gets better too. Good grief, that man. Yeah. Don't know how to stay not injured. Oh, don't worry. I'm pretty sure when he gets back, he'll try and do something that will most likely get him killed. Like what? Jump off a 50 foot ladder? Well, let's see. Didn't Jeff Hardy say a few years back during an interview that how he wanted to end his career was basically do a Hell in a Cell match with Undertaker where he jumps off the structure of the cell, misses and lands and crashes into the ring? Oh, God. Yes, he did. <laughs> because he has a... Uh, also, one last thing. Uh, how did you all feel when you heard that Mick Foley said, I'm willing to go back to kill myself inside Hell in a Cell at Saudi Arabia? I was like, don't do it. Don't let don't let the blood money take you, Mick. Do not be consumed by blood money. Do not go down this dark path. Just don't do it. You're freaking hell in a cell 20 years ago, and your freaking special would mean absolutely nothing if you did this, and it would be a slap in the face to anybody that's a real classic WWE wrestling fan. For whatever wrestling was left back then, and it's still left now. Don't do it. Yeah. And, and, and I... This room... No. What'd you say, Jake? I'm asking, no, is, is, is there like a War of the World show tomorrow for... Yes, there is. And yes, them boys, the Briscoes, are taking on Gorillas of Destiny. Oh, all right. I'm definitely going to watch then. If that match is happening. I cannot wait for that match. What a way to close out this tour. Yep, you can that definitely bet I'm going to watch now. Week. Now that I know that that match is happening. You're damn right. That's going to be my match of the tour, I believe. I cannot freaking Just wait. hopefully no Enzo and cast interference. And it'll be a great match. Don't mention those effing names as boils on human existence and wrestling. Uh, okay, so, uh, yeah, but, like, okay, when I heard Mick Foley was saying he was willing to do the whole Hell in a Cell thing with Undertaker at Saudi Arabia, I was like, uh, this reminds me of what happened to the one of the developers during uh, Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. What happened? He admitted in an interview during the development of the game that he was having so much stomach cramps that it felt like food poisoning to him that he actually took an IV drip and went back to work like it was nothing. Yeah, he actually confessed this in an interview and laughs about it. Again, some people are just stupid, cynical, have no mind, and no kinds of reality. But before we close this, Courtney, you have one closing thought on two human boils of existence.
Also, I would like to make a special announcement. Um, in July, I might not be a- we might not be able to do the Elite of Wrestling podcast until a little near late July because I'll be on vacation in Colorado from June to July. Okay, Eric. Well, you have a ton of fun, brother. That's and this fun. will be the time I'm not watching any wrestling, so I'm safe from five hours of horrible content. <laughs> And two, and probably two pay-per-views. Yeah, 